Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another Lawn Care live stream. My name is Ron Henry, and I am your humble host for tonight's festivities. If this is your first time um, joining the Lawn Care live stream, first of all, welcome. The way this works is really simple. You just drop your questions down in the chat down below, and I work through them in the order that they come in. Sometimes I have the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. This time of year, uh, it's it's beginning to slow down, right? So we don't have as much um, you know stuff to do in our lawns because it's starting to cool off, at least in the United States anyway, for any of the international audience, like especially those in Australia, you guys are going into your go time, right? But for us here in the US, it's starting to get pretty cool and uh, the lawn is, is starting to check out. So let's see what we have in the live stream tonight. We got Mr. Patrick in from Texas, very formally says, good evening, Mr. Henry. Evening, Patrick. Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. I appreciate you. You said it's saddening. My grass is not growing much. What to do with my time? Uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, like I've, I'm down to right now mowing once a week. You know, there's not very much coming off the grass. I got to mow tomorrow. Uh, I did a YouTube story here right before the show. If you guys are interested, you can see what the grass looks like. But it's not. It's barely growing. It is starting to discolor some. So some of the, some of the the colors starting to go out of the lawn even more. But yeah, I'm with you. Not a whole lot to do right now other than hang out and on you know live streams on YouTube and uh, you know whatever. Watch football. Um, watch the Braves. You know, congrats to the Braves. I guess the curse is broken. We'll see if if, uh, if that spells good things for for other Georgia sports teams. Hopefully, the Bulldogs can also get it done this year. So, congrats for the Braves on their big uh, World Series win. But yeah, I mean, just sit out there and just wait for warmer days. I promise, spring will be here before you know it. All right, let's see who else we got here in the live stream. We got C Math. He says, "Woot woot!" Just got off work. About to head to the 101 freeway, roll down the windows, and enjoy Los Angeles weather while letting that air pollution into my lungs. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is my St. Augustine is definitely slowing down, but my cool grass is still growing. Well, I'm glad that we are able to accompany you on your uh, drive home on the 101 CMath. I always appreciate having you on the live stream as uh, as always. And it looks like you're getting the best of both worlds, right? So your cool season turf is doing all right. St. Augustine's starting to fall off as it should. And, uh, and that's all part of it. So be safe um, on uh, on the freeway and get home safe. All right, next up we got um, VMH in the house saying happy Friday, uh, Ron, what's going on VMH? Hope you're, do you're doing well. You have to give us an update, man. How is the lawn looking now? I know that you been, were fighting with crabgrass a lot of the season. Uh, now it should be pretty much gone, I would think, or, or falling off pretty, pretty, uh, pretty heavily. So definitely give us an update as far as how the lawn is doing. And the next up, we got Mark. If you guys remember Mark um, from a couple live streams ago, we were talking about perennial ryegrass. He did the overseed, and he's saying now, give us an update, saying that the, the, the perennial rye is looking beautiful in spite of the Bermuda not wanting to go dormant. Uh, Phoenix weather is perfect. I can see that, Mark. I'm not sure what the temps are in Phoenix. I guess I could look here really quick. Uh, but during the summer, I know you guys have a really hard time, like it's as far as like the amount of heat that um, that Phoenix gets. Um, but, uh, you know, now this time of year, I imagine that the temps are actually pretty nice. Yes. Yeah, so it's saying it's 59. Wow. So it's, it's 90 during the day and it's 59 at night. Wow. Wow. That's a pretty big swing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great, a great weather for, um, for your cool season grass to grow in. 90 seems a bit warm. So I'm surprised it's doing well, but, uh, but yeah, glad that your overseeding project is doing well and you're proving us wrong. So remember on the live stream, you caught some flat people were saying, no, you shouldn't use um, perennial ryegrass or you shouldn't overseed with it. And uh, you're proving us wrong. You're showing that it, it can be done. And, and I haven't seen pictures, but I'm sure the, the, the lawn looks lawn looks really nice. So thanks for giving us uh, that update. So CMath is giving us some updates as far as what he's doing on his lawn. He says uh, he applied aerate, RGS, and something else. Uh, and something else. <laughs> okay. Uh, he says, oh, Humic 12. Humic 12 is the other thing. I hope I did well in applying. Thoughts, Ron? Here's the thing, CMath. I'm sure I'm sure that's going to work out fine, but I've never used any of those three products. Maybe at some point... Next season, I'll see if I can um, get my hands on a bottle, a small bottle of each of them and try using them for one month and just see if there's if there's any difference. Here's the thing, uh, you know, the people that that use those products seem to really like them. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're using them, and you're getting good results, stick with it. I've just never used them personally to be able to say, but um, Aerate, RGS, I'm not sure what's in Root Growth Stimulator and then Humic 12. Like humic acid definitely is a lot of there's a lot of value in that. Um, and the other products, um, you know, again, I don't I don't not use them personally, but I'm sure you're not hurting things by uh, by using those or applying those to your lawn. So uh, good stuff. Good stuff. We got Mr. Daryl Tunstall in the house What's going on, Daryl. Hopefully your lawn's probably looking like how my lawn is. Right. It's starting to look a little sickly and 
still green, but not really green. You know, like it's trying to check out, but but is, is holding on for dear life. And then next up, we got Mr. Lon to learn. He's saying, good evening, Ron. My Bermuda grass is seriously lacking sun. It's very thin. I'm thinking of renovating again. Should I try zoysia? Okay, so this time of year, uh, you know, the days are shorter. So I'm not sure if it's, um, they're not that short to where, you know, the, um, to where, uh, the days are that short to where if the grass, if the grass was growing well in the summertime, it should be doing okay now, albeit going into dormancy. So if, um, if the, if the, if the grass is lacking sun, it's looking thin, it's looked thin all summer, like it's looked thin the entire time, then yeah, then maybe you can, you might want to consider going to zoysia. It's a little bit more shade tolerant. Uh, it, just, it really depends on how much, how much sun you're getting. But remember too, guys, um, like the position of the earth in relation to the sun is different this time of year too. So like a good example, um, during the spring and summer, I hardly ever have any shade. Well, I don't have any shade anymore because they put a fence up. But when the shrubs were still there, you know, the shrubs I, you guys hear me talk about all the time, um, during the spring and summer month, there's hardly any shadow from those shrubs. When it comes to this time of year in the fall, uh, they do cast a shadow. So remember, as you as you get into the fall months, um, you might get a bit more shade um, from you know trees or shrubs or things like that that you did not get during the summer, which can cause the grass to thin out. But lawn to learn, it really depends on. I'd say let's let's gauge how the lawn was looking during the summer. If during the summer it looked awesome, um, but it's looking thinner now, and it's just just par for the course. You know, uh, if you want to go to Zoysia, you can. But if it, it's looking thin the entire time, like it never really thickened up and looked awesome throughout the entire season. Then, uh, then you can get to consider zoysia, but it, it might be the Bermuda is just doing what it's supposed to be doing uh, for this time of year. So, uh, how's that for an answer? I guess the, the the my response is it depends. It depends on uh, on if the lawn ever looked good at all or looked thick enough uh, based on what you 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 want to get out of it. All right, next up we have Mr. Papa Moslo in the house. He says, "Hey everyone, can't join tonight, but you kind of did." This is uh, spring pre-emergent, but I've missed a few spots along the driveway and have a few weeds. You recommend pulling or should I spray something like image over the lawn? It depends on the weeds you're dealing with, Papa Moslo. Um, it depends on the weeds. Now, now here's the thing, the areas near um, pavement, kind of like what you're seeing with your driveway, like near the patio, like those areas can get, um, if, if you, you didn't do a good job with the pre-emergent, I'm not surprised that you're seeing more weed pressure in those areas than you are in the middle part of the lawn because it tends to stay warmer. So just if there's any weed seeds there, uh, as far as them germinating, they've got kind of an advantage. They got like a little, literally a little warmer next to them, helping that process along. Uh, but yeah, if you want spray image, depends on the weeds you're dealing with. If you're dealing with like POA coming through, then yeah, image image should work well. Um, image or or um, or certainty. Uh, you know, depending, it depends on the weeds you're dealing with. But yeah, I would spray something if you want to, uh, if you want to get rid of them, and then do a, a pre-emergent app, maybe just like a, an app just localized, just to that area, and uh, and see if that that does the trick. Absolutely would um, try, would do my best to try and get rid of them. So I, I would spray them out, but then if you're fairly certain that it's because you missed those spots, then doing a, an app of pre-emergent just in those areas, don't do the entire line, just in those areas is something I would consider doing as well so that you're not fighting a huge problem uh, come springtime. Great, great stuff. Hope all else is going well. Next up, we got Mr. Robert Rainey saying, good evening, everyone. What's up, Robert? Hope you're doing well. And then C. Hill is in the house. He says, greetings and salutations, Mr. Ron. It's always great to hear your feedback on your lawn experience. Thanks for what you do. Hashtag iron sharpens iron. That is so true. That is so true, sir. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I mean, I'm I'm the host of the live stream, but I mean, it's it's. I like to think of it as more of a collaborative environment, right? So a lot of you guys have, um, we have some lawn care pros that come in here and hang out. Um, some people that have been, that are just serious lawn care geese like, me, like myself, and we all kind of bounce ideas off of each other and, and solve a lot of problems together. So absolutely uh, agree with that. Also want to announce um, a giveaway that we're gonna be doing, again, the way it works using the comment section, it's not gonna be tonight, it'll be like next week. Um, but uh, we're gonna be doing hats. It's like, it's uh, it's gonna be hat giveaway. So I've got some hats from Miramichi Green. Um, but if you guys didn't win last time, here's your chance again. We're gonna be doing a total of three hats. So we got the um, FDE Desert Tan hat. So we got that guy. This is gonna be option one. We have, um, I don't know what you'd call this, almost like a tungsten type color, I guess, is what you, you would you would call that. And then next up, we have a one of the Josh Abib specials, Ron Henry hat. So we're gonna be doing that one. So we have this one or we have the navy blue. Which one do you which one do you guys prefer? I, I think the two-tone is kind of cooler, but um, 
You know what? I've got this on manual focus. Let's put it on auto. Yeah, I've got I've got this in, in the two tone. So you guys tell me which one do you guys think is better? So you guys can take a vote. Which of these can be the third giveaway for uh, next week? So next uh, next week. So we're gonna do the two Marichi green hats and one of the custom Josh Habib special Ron Henry hats. So you guys let me know whether you are voting for the navy or we'll say navy or gray. We'll just say that navy or gray. You guys you guys decide. Awesome, awesome stuff. And you know what? We'll just make, we'll, we'll based on uh, in honor of Sea Hill, we'll say the comment you need to make in the comment section is iron sharpens iron. That's that's what you got to put in to be eligible to uh, to win. All right, cool. Next up, we got Hickey Pop in the house. He says, hello, all. Happy Friday. Be sure to hit that like button for Ron. It's free. That is so true. You know, touching that like button, it's it's a free thing. I mean, granted, I know you guys got to move your mouse up there, but it's it's a great way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, you know, if you do it at the top of the hour, or even like right now, it gives me a chance to have a sip of my lemonade, which is also a good thing, and it just helps promote the channel, so I really do appreciate it. All right, thanks for that, Higgy Pop. We got Alexander Thomas saying, what's going on, everybody? Hope you're doing well, Alex. And then Pirate2031, yes, my favorite time of the week. Hope you're doing well, um, uh, Pirate. I'm um, glad it's your favorite time of the week. I am. Um, I'm looking forward to it as well. This should be a good, fun weekend, man. I got karate tomorrow, and then there's UFC tomorrow night. I believe it's UFC tomorrow night. I'm, I'm pretty sure. So I think it's supposed to be a pretty decent card. So that should be fun. And then next up, we got Oxan saying, "Hey, yes, well, let's go, Ron. Once again, I am here." And then Adam Reed is is letting us know the what the, what the season is like this time of year. He says, "What's up from Arkansas?" There's a low of 29 degrees tonight. I'm currently chopping firewood. That is insane, man. That's super cold. Let's see, what, what's it going to get down to here in Georgia? We are, let me see, look at Gainesville. We're at 40 right now. We might break down into the 30s. I don't know. We might. Let's see. So if you guys take a look here, it's 40 degrees right now. Um, and if we go hour by hour, I don't think we're going to get into the, into the 30s, but it's... Uh, yeah, no, let's say we're gonna stay in the 40s um, most of the night. So we're not we're not quite where you guys are in in Arkansas as yet, but uh but yeah, it's it's nippy. It's definitely cold. It's definitely cold. I can mow the lawn. Last time I mowed the lawn, I didn't break a sweat. So that should tell you something. And if I mow tomorrow, I'm probably not gonna break a sweat either. So but uh, I'm glad that you're you're doing your part to keep warm, Adam. I mean, firewood should help, and then also just the act of chopping firewood will also help too. All right, Lindrick Butler's in the house saying happy Friday, happy Friday. Uh, temps are dropping. They are, they are, <laughs> they definitely are. And then a uh, pirate is about the whip turns. Yeah, man, you know what it is? W this year I mowed more than I have um, in any other season. Like there's one, there's a couple of months where I was mowing like every day. So you start maximizing or start figuring out ways to get it done faster. And whip turns are a really good way to do that. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of hard to describe how um how like what the process is like but i tend to kind of make them swing out a little bit kind of like a, make a wider turn i i, I put have a, a, a slight amount of back pressure on the mower whip it around and then slowly drop it on on the grass for another pass so it's something you it's like a feel thing you develop over time but it's um it's cool it's a great way to save time you never have to disengage the uh, the drive you just you're just running the mower the entire time so i am glad that you appreciate it sir very, I'm very appreciative of that. All right, next up we got Cal asking a question about pre-emergence. Good question, good question. He says, hey Ron, is it too late for pre-emergent? I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Also, how would you go about purchasing an outlet mower? Okay, so two very timely questions. The one about pre-emergent, is it too late? I mean, it's not too late. Are you past the ideal time to have done it? Yes, but if you haven't put any pre-emergent down, I would, I still would do it. Uh, you know, there's, you are gonna probably have some POA that's going to uh, that's going to sprout and show up here in a, in a month or two in your lawn, but you can prevent a serious problem by getting some pre-emergent down. So I absolutely still would do that um, if you have warm season grass. So if you have something like if you have Bermuda or zoysia, consider going with something like Coastal. And I'm recommending that. I'm I'm not sure if Coastal is available to North Carolina. Let's see. Let's see if Coastal you can actually even get it there because there's a lot of states where it is restricted. Let us see if the great state of North Carolina is one of them states. All right. It is not. You can get it there. Cool. So yeah. So what I would do, Cal, if again, assuming you have warm season grass, like Bermuda or Zoysia, assuming you have that, coastal is what I would go with. Um, I, ever, I did a video on pre-emergent this fall where I actually spoke about coastal. 
and I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. Um, so the nice thing about this pre-emergent is that not only is it, you can save five bucks, um, not only is it um, got prodiamine in it as your, your pre-emergent, but it also contains imazequin and simazine. So what that means is any of the weeds that have started to, to grow in your lawns, you can see all the, the ones that it targets, like the big one we're concerned about here is annual bluegrass, like a poannua, but several other ones that it takes care of, dollar weed, dovetail, several others, um, it will, kill those, it will, it'll, it'll take care of those weeds in addition to preventing new weeds from germinating. So this guy's a little bit more expensive. Um, you know, you can buy Prodiamine for cheaper than that, but as far as an all-in-one, something that's gonna take care of both um, your existing weeds, given that you're applying this late in the season and prevent um, a big problem in the spring, Coastal is something that's worth considering. Again, it's not inexpensive, but you know, it's kind of like one of these things where we're behind the eight ball here, behind the curve, so using something that um, that takes care of the weeds you already have, I think is a is a good idea. If you're going to be out there spraying it, you may as well um, also take care of that. So I'll put a link here in the chat for you, Cal, for that, and I'll also show you. Um, I'll give you. I'll show you a video here of how to apply it. So the last video I did on the channel is was about fall pre-emergent, and coastal is one of the ones that I um, that I spoke about. So that video, um, the video, and that link will. We'll take care of you. Great stuff. All right. Uh, next up, we got Alex uh, B in the house. He says, "Happy Friday, Ron." Um, of late, the landscape supply stores by me are pushing gypsum. Never use it, but want to know um, what it is used for and does it affect pH? From what I understand, gypsum has a very, very slight effect on pH. Um, I've I've never applied it, so I'm not actually sure what the what the benefits of gypsum are to. Um, your soil. I can look it up here really quick, but I've never actually um, used it. Let's do a, a quick Google search here. We can find out. It says it will change soil pH very slightly. That I do know. It says it'll help with root development, um, especially in acidic so soils, um, counteracts the, the toxic effect of, of aluminum on root development. So if you... Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's not something I've ever applied to my uh, to my lawn personally, but it looks like it's something that helps promote root development. And if you have um, high levels of aluminum in your soil, it can help uh, help with that as well. So I don't know that it's something that um, unless you there's an absolute need for it, that you something you should be applying. Um, but yeah, I, I've never applied it. I've never actually recommended it to anyone that's applied it. And you're you're probably the I'm trying to think, Alex, you're probably the first person that's actually asked that. So so as far as on the live stream or even in email, I haven't had anyone ask me about applying uh, gypsum to their lawn. So, you know, look, do some more research on it. And if and if the if the benefits are something you think your soil could use, then yeah. But otherwise, I wouldn't apply it just because everything around, you know, all the the local stores are, are are pushing it. It might be something in your area that's common, but around here in Georgia, Northeast Georgia, it's not something that is regularly um, regularly put on lawns. So, hopefully, hopefully that helps. All right, next up, we have Ms. Grace Ortiz is in the house. She says, happy Friday, Ron. Temps were 32 degrees. Ouch, man, you guys need to move. It's, that's, that's, that's horrible. It's only, I mean, this is November 5th, but the 30s already, man. That's, that's savage. That's, that, I'm not looking forward to that. See, and, and here's the thing. I, I went out there to go film, um, to go do a little bit of, uh, like a couple of YouTube stories just showing you guys the back lawn, and it was cold. It was only 40 degrees. And I literally was thinking to myself, there's no way. I am so glad that I did not, you know, take the take the uh, the bait or, or decide to um, do perennial rye in my lawn because I do not want to be out mowing regularly in those in this kind of weather. So it's uh, not fun, not fun, Grace. I'm sorry that you're dealing with that, but just dress warm, and I'm I'm sure you're used to it. You're probably you're probably better at it than than I am. All right, so we got a super chat here. Let me run down here and grab it real quick from Merrill Williams. Thank you so much, Mer Merrill. Very generous. Super chat received. Just happy Friday, Ron and everyone. Ron, does your lawn store have any Black Friday specials this year? Thanks. That's a good question, um, Merrill. Um, I'll have to see what we can do. There's not, here's the thing, there's not a ton of margin on a lot of the, on, a lot, on pretty much any of the stuff that's in the stores, but I can talk to some of um, the companies that I partner with and see if there's something we can do for uh, for a Black Friday. Of, of I can tell you this, of the products just that come to mind, the Miramichi green products are the one I'm probably gonna have the most leeway on. Um, so I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. But as far as the um, the other stuff, there's just not that, there's just not that much in those to where 
I can do like a really big discount on those for uh, for Black Friday. We'll see though. I will. It's, it's a good question, and I'll, I'll do some uh, I'll do some digging on my side and see what we can uh, we can come up with. See what we can come up with. Thanks for the super chat, sir. I appreciate it. Hope you are doing well. All right. Next up, we have C Hill. He says, uh, "Everyone, give it up for Ron Henry." I don't know about that. Uh, I appreciate it, C Hill. Thanks. And then Grace Ortiz says, wash hands, wash hands, wash hands. Yeah, that's a, that's the thing. This time of year, you know, people start getting colds and whatever, and you, you start spending more time indoors. So definitely wash your hands, wash your hands, don't touch your face. You know, all that um, common sense stuff, um, especially if, with you spending more time uh, indoors as temps fall. It's good advice, Grace. All right. Fernie C has a question. She's, uh, he or she says, um, at Ron Henry, have you ever thought about applying some ryegrass to stay green year round? Uh, or is winter your time off? See, I just, I didn't even read this question ahead of time, but it's a great segue. Um, I have thought about it. There's a couple of reasons why I personally am not a fan of it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. There's people that do it. I get example, Mark F, who's in the chat right now, has done it. He's gotten, I haven't seen the results, but but he's gotten good results with it. He likes it. Um, but I don't do it for a couple of reasons. One, I hate cold temperatures. I hate cold weather. I don't like being outside when it's cold. So if it's, if I put down perennial ryegrass, then I have to get out and mow the lawn when it's cold, which is something I don't want to do. And then the second reason is um, when springtime rolls around, if you want the Bermuda to grow out and come out of dormancy well, you really need to get rid of the of the perennial ryegrass. And what this means is you're going to end up spraying something like Celsius on your a blanket application of it across your entire lawn in around, in around the month of March, when the Bermuda is starting to come out of dormancy. So you're stressing the Bermuda a little bit while it's trying to wake up. Um, and if you decide you're not gonna do that, you have a mess on your hands. Like there's a, there's a lawn in the neighborhood here that did a perennial rye overseed and they never sprayed it out. And literally into June, you could still see some rye, you know, poking through. The lawn just looked, it looked, looked really bad. So for me, not wanting to mow during the winter months is thing one. And then second, I my main focus is Bermuda. So I, w I don't want to do anything that's going to really mess with the Bermuda's ability to grow well. And yeah, it is nice having some time off just to kind of hang out in the live stream with you guys and and chat and just uh, just cut up a little bit. You know, having, having time off is good, I think. So those are my reasons why I don't uh, do perennial rye. I'm not saying I never will, but as of right now, I still feel pretty strongly about not doing that. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. All right, next up we got Thomas uh, Friday, awesome name. He says, is it too late to seed? It's a bit late, Thomas. I mean, if you wanna try it, you can, but it's it's uh, it's so, it's getting, I mean, the temps are falling pretty much, all, um, falling everywhere around the country. So if you were to go out and spend a bunch of money on grass seed, I just don't know what kind of germination you would get. And I'd hate to see you go through all that trouble um, and expense and not get a good result. It is, it is a bit late um, for that. So uh, I think, you know, just, I think next year, next year is gonna be, your, your time. If you decide you wanna do perennial rye, uh, and again, I'm answering this question as if you have warm season grass and you're trying to oversee with perennial rye grass. Um, if you're gonna do that, uh, late August, early September is the time to, to start thinking about doing uh, that kind of a seeding project. Right now, we're already in November. Um, it's, it's a bit late. I mean, you can give it a shot if you want, but I just don't think you're gonna get um, as good a result as you would had you done it you know, two months ago. All right, next up, we got Mr. Kevin D. Jones saying, good evening, Sensei. What's going on, Kevin? I appreciate you coming to hang out, sir, as always. Also have Angela. I think Angela's from the UK, if I remember right. I think so. It's There, there is someone from the UK, um, a couple of you from the UK. There's there's Shazia, and I think Angela is too. So she says, hi, Ron, and everyone in the chat. What's going on, Angela? Hope you're doing well and keeping warm wherever you are. And then next up, we have um, Pirate2031 uh, with a question about Bermuda. He says, I live in central North Carolina. And I have some type of hybrid Bermuda. It's probably Tiffway, I would imagine. Um, is there a way to tell what type of Bermuda it is? Huh. Um, not that I, not easily. Not easily. I mean, you could, um, you could, if you're in a neighborhood, a couple, couple of things you could do. If you, depending on how old your house is, Pirate, you could um, reach out to the builder and ask them or ask who they subbed doing your lawn to what kind of grass they install. That's one thing you can do. I don't know if local extension offices have any kind of service where they'll tell you what kind of grass uh, it is. But you know, if if you live in a subdivision, 
um, and you know the, the your neighbors around you have the same type of grass. Um, you can, you might also ask like a um, like one of the the turf care companies, like if True Green or one of those guys are rolling through. And again, assuming they know, because not all those guys really would know that kind of stuff. If you can ask one of them, saying, "Hey, you know what, what's the grass that's installed in this area?" They might be able to give you an idea. Um, but your your best bet to know for sure is to pro is to ask the builder. I don't know of an easy way otherwise to um, to be able to look at a review and say, "Oh, this one is." You know, tiff way or tiff tough or um, or something like that. So, sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but I think there's there, you should have out of those options I, I presented, you should be able to figure out like what kind of um, what kind of grass you have. Probably tiff way four nineteen. That's very very common, as at least in new construction uh, to get installed in homes. All right, next up we have uh, Mr. Todd Hickey in the house. He says I got my soil tests. Uh, results need lime to help with pH. Okay, what is typical schedule for applications? Do I apply during winter months? Bermuda grass uh, in in eastern North Carolina. So I would do it now. If you've not, if you your sold test results say that you need lime, get it down now. Like the fall is a great time to apply lime. Obviously, if you get to the point where you're getting snow on the ground and that type of thing, we don't want to be applying lime or, or any granular uh, lawn care product, any liquid, any lawn care product at all really um, when it, when the ground is frozen. But if that's not the case for you, which it shouldn't be in North Carolina just quite yet, uh, then putting down some lime is a is a good idea. Uh, I'm not sure which soil test result you use, but um, I like to go um, anywhere between 20 pounds to 40 pounds per thousand um, on lime. And again, every soil is different. It can make a, the, the adjustment differences, um, you know, the, how it's gonna respond can be different. Um, but if I can pull up my uh, my my soil um, test results, if I can I can show you guys this really quick. If I can pull up my portal here, maybe I can make this happen. I can show you what kind of results, or at least in my lawn anyway, right? Now every soil is different, but in my soil, what um, kind of response I got from 40 pounds per thousand uh, during the summer. So let's see what we have here yep it's loading awesome great all right page two which is ron henry summer and then ron henry fall we will compare those two results boom all right so if we cut over here to my soul test results get my face out the way from blocking this all right so if you if you can see that you see the dark blue is the summer of this year and then the light blue the bars on the right is the fall so it was um october 11th so in the summer if you notice by ph it was still in it was still decent but it was trending on the lower end of the optimal level i think it was in the i think it was low sixes high fives low sixes thereabouts um in the um in the winter i'm sorry in the in the summer and what i did in june you guys can actually see the video for it i applied 40 pounds per thousand of uh, dolomitic lime to my lawn, and this is the response that I got in three months, right? So from um, from June, actually a little more than that, three and a half months from from um, from June till till uh, October, that's the response I got. So I, I don't I don't have your soil test results, but um, you can see what kind of a shift doing forty pounds per thousand. Um, did or can have in some soils. Not all soils going to respond that way, but that's uh, that's what I got with mine. You know, three and a half months later after after application. So, uh, so yeah, absolutely do it now. Now's a great time to do it. Make sure you water it in heavily after you apply it, and uh, and yeah, and then just test again um, in the spring and see see how uh, how the soil is responding to it. So, hopefully that helps, Troy. Uh, Troy Todd, and uh, yeah, let me know if I can help with anything else. All right, next up, uh, Troy Ridley's in the house. That's why I said Troy, because I saw Troy's comment saying, happy Friday, what's going on, Troy? Hope you're doing well, sir. And then next up, we have Heartfelt Fashion saying, hey, Ron, good evening. I have an order of Caravan G on the way. Good, and for then you guys that don't know what Caravan G is, that is a combination insecticide and fungicide that um, Syngenta makes. He says, I have anthills and some brown spot uh, to end the year. I saw a video where you suggested this product. Yeah, so um, the Ant Hills is not going to do a whole lot about that. You want to get, you want to use something like um, like the Orthene, or um, a really good product for ants is um, Ulster Magenta. It's their um, uh, Advion. Advion. It's like a granular product. I've got like a video on it here somewhere uh, that I can show you. I might be able to dig it up here really quick. If the Google cooperates, yes, yeah. so it's a video from like 2017. Do not do not laugh at me because my video co production quality was completely awful then. Some would say it's awful now still, but uh, it was much worse then. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna see the product I'm talking about, um, Heartfelt for Ants, um, I'll you can check out this this video where I, I show it. 
but it's also made by Syngenta. It's a really, really good product. Um, it's like a granular. So again, it comes like a two pound jug. So you'll just walk around your lawn and kind of spray it and like spread it all over your lawn. And that does really, really well for um, for ants. And the same thing for uh, Caravan G, as far as being a good, an excellent fungicide and insecticide, it's a really good product. Like Caravan G is all I used for, um, for the past three years, three or four years, uh, up until this year when I switched to Headway and a Celeprint. So I kind of broke up, I separated my insecticide and, and fungicide, but Caravan G is an excellent product. You're gonna, you're gonna get good results with that. So hopefully that helps. All right, next up, um, you know what I didn't answer? I didn't answer the question that he had about the mower. Um, I was just thinking about that. Um, yeah, the question that, that he had about um, about which where to get a mower. So yes, yeah, so for the gentleman that had the question about um, the Allet, I've never bought an Allet. I'm not sure if you can order it directly from them, um, but if if that's if you can you can get one directly from them. If you're gonna go brand new, that's probably the way to do it. Otherwise, you can look around. It's Cal. There we go. Otherwise, you can look around and um, check out Craigslist, offer up um, Facebook Marketplace, see if someone's selling a used one. I know someone in the Golf Course Lawn Academy recently got a really good deal on an outlet and they got it pre-owned. So you can definitely save some coin if you're able to, if you're willing to shop around and be a bit patient. But if you're going new, just go to the, go straight to the source. Go to outlet. That's, uh, that is what I would um, recommend. This just jumped to my mind that I forgot to answer your question. So I, I apologize uh, for that. All right, uh, next up we have Mr. HR, Mr. Helmut Ruckus in the house. He says, happy Friday, Ron and audience. Do you think it's time for me here in Fort Lauderdale to apply pre-emergent now or wait till next month? Thanks and everybody have a, have a great weekend. Uh, yeah, I would get it down now, um, uh, HR. Yeah, get it get it down now. I mean, it's it, Fort Lauderdale is probably not, you're not gonna get you know crazy cold temperatures. Um, but when it comes to pre-emergent, I am of the opinion that a bit early is better than late. Because it, here's the thing, if you wait till next month, and I don't know if you deal with a lot of POA in your um, in your lawn or other cool season weeds, but if say next month rolls around, so beginning of December rolls around and you're starting to see weeds in your lawn, you waited too long, right? Doing pre-emergent then isn't gonna do anything for the ones that have already germinated. So I would err on the side of a bit early than late if it's if it's me. You're gonna get you're gonna get a good result with that. Again, kind of talking about what happened with Alex's lawn this year, we did his his um his summer pre-emergent application or spring pre-emergent application rather is more accurate. Um, I think it was late January, early February, which really for pre-emergent is really on the early side. That's, that's really earlier than you really need to be doing it. Um, but we did a full rate app and we got a great result. We had no issues with, um, no issues within his lawn with weeds all, all, uh, all went all spring, all throughout the spring and all throughout the summer. So I would go air on earlier than later, uh, if it were me, um, HR. So hopefully, that helps. All right, uh, next up, um, Alex says, B says, hey Ron, have you given any more thought into doing an updated video showing us the lawn care equipment you've added to your arsenal? Surely many of us would wanna see that. That's a good idea, Helmet, uh, or, or, uh, Alex. I, you know, I'm thinking about ideas for content this time of year, because I don't wanna make stuff just for the sake of making it, but a lawn equipment video could be cool. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. That's actually a good idea. Um, so I've, got, I've gotten, you know, the, the Greens Master, the, um, and some other, some other bits of kit. So it's um, it's worth doing a video um, like that. I think I think it's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. I can uh, I can make that happen. Let's make a note here to myself. Um, yep, I can do that. I can do that. So it's, that's a, that's a good idea. And I'll give you guys something to watch. Give you a, give you guys a shopping list for next year, maybe. Uh, so yeah, we can do that, Alex. We got Mr. LG in the house. What's going on, LG? Hope you're doing well, sir. Uh, I'm sure you're cold. You guys you guys are in either. It's Iowa, you, Iowa or Idaho, I think it's Iowa. Um, so I'm sure it's really cold there uh, compared to here because it's already cold in Georgia. Hope you uh, are doing well. And uh, next up, we got Matthew Bell in the house. He says, happy Friday. My perennial ryegrass is still hanging in there for my tenacity. Oops, anything I can do this season to help recover from an over application? Not really, Matthew, not, not that I'm aware of. I mean, it's kind of like a, a, when it comes to a fertilizer over application. Um, you know, well, it's actually worse than a fertilizer application. Over over applying uh, granular fur, you can do something about that. You can get a lot of it, remove a lot of it. But tenacity, um, you know, there's not a whole lot you can do other than just let time pass uh, to to get the lawn to get the grass to bounce back from it. I mean, if your grass is still actively growing, 
you can do like a light fertilizer app. Like if you're still feeding the lawn, like uh, for this time of year, again, assuming where you are, where you are, your grass is still growing well, uh, just keep up with your fertilizer apps. Like that's gonna help promote growth and help the lawn recover a bit faster. But as far as anything to help reverse the effects of tenacity uh, or an over application of tenacity, um, there's nothing that I'm aware of um, that'll do that, or really for any herbicide. Um, so it's just gonna be, it's gonna be time, unfortunately. So sorry, I don't have a, uh, sorry, I don't have a better answer for you, but, um, but yeah. It will recover, it'll do better. All right, next up we have Caleb Watson says, uh, is it a bad idea to broadcast spray tenacity in early spring for a pre-emergent barrier from weeds? Here's the thing, like using tenacity as a, I mean, it has some pre-emergent qualities, but it's not it's not in the same class as say something like Dithiopyr or Prodiamine. Like those have, will last for, you know, four months, maybe a bit longer depending on, um, you know, on environment factors and how good a job you did applying it, like tenacity is not gonna is not gonna work for that long. So I would not use tenacity um as a as a substitute for pre-emergent. Like I would if it, it's a it's a benefit, like it's a bonus that it um that it has some pre-emergent qualities, but it's not it's not the same quality, it's not the same class as like a as a prodiamine or dithiopyr, kind of like um dithiopyr, right? It's a good example on the other spectrum. Like dithiopyr is a really good pre-emergent that also has some like some mild post-emergent um, qualities where if you have baby crabgrass, it can kill like very young crabgrass, but it's not like the best tool for killing crabgrass, right? Like if you have crabgrass in your lawn, like you wouldn't want to go out and do an application of dithiopyr. There's way better products to use for that. It's the same thing with tenacity and using it primarily as your pre-emergent. Does that make sense? You want to? It's it's. It's great that it, it has some of that, but I would not use it as a substitute for um, for your uh, for prodiamine or dithiopyr. Not to mention that it's also a lot more expensive, right? Like prodiamine is a lot cheaper than tenacity is. So if you want a pre-emergent, I would use that instead of instead of your tenacity. Great question. It's a good one. And guys, I'm saying iron sharpens iron. It needs to be so. Whenever the the live stream is over. Uh, that's when you have to do it. So not right now. Like and this, this chat will not is not going to really be a thing. It's this, you need to put the, that in the comments, like the comment section of this live stream after the uh, live stream ends tonight. That's that's when you would put that put that in. And the way things are looking, it's probably going to be a short one tonight because you guys don't have a ton of questions and it's a, you know quiet evening. So we shall see. You guys, we'll see what you guys come up with. All right, Alex B is uh, leading the charge. He says, "Let's get those likes started for Ron." I appreciate it, Alex. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. And then next up we have um Arlen or Arlene. I think I, I think I spoke with you in um in either not email but in the the, the comments. She says, "Hi Henry, my I'm at my first time at the live stream. Welcome. Thanks and uh, thanks for coming to hang out with us. Um, I have zoysia and I have I found a lot of holes. Oh, when is the best time to add or level the ground? And should I do sand or dirt? Arlene from Alabama. Um, great. So." Uh, yes, top dressing or a light top dress is a good solution to what you're dealing with as far as leveling or those small little dips in the lawn. The best time to do that um, is going to be in the, the late spring to early summer. So right now we wouldn't want to, we want to top dress now. You're going to want to wait till May or June of next year to do that. Uh, as far as whether you should use sand or um, dirt or topsoil, I am a fan of using a, a blend. So a, a blend of, of primarily sand and then some uh, topsoil or compost mixed in with it, I think makes a good combination. It's a good balance between the sand adding structure, which means it's gonna level out like the, the, um, the uneven areas of the lawn, and then the, so and then the topsoil or compost helping to feed um, the soil, help improving the quality of your soil. So I've got a video on that, on top dressing, uh, that I will, um, I've got several of them actually, but I will, I'll, I'll send, I'll put one here in the chat for you to check out that shows um, what I'm talking about, like what the process is like. I'll actually show you the more recent one that shows like how to fix, like how to do like some spot tip dressing work. So if, in case you're not trying to do the entire lawn, you just want to fix just those bumpy areas, uh, how to uh, to go about doing that. So it's, it's it's a fun video, even if you don't plan on top dressing your lawn, it's only like four minutes and it's, it's, it's fun. I try to have a little bit of fun with it and I think a lot of people tend to like this one more than the others, so. I will put that in the uh, in the chat for you, Arlene, and there you go. And that is the uh, the top dressing video. But yes, a 70-30 mix, and May, June of next year is the time to go about doing that. That is when I would do it. Ma main reason, I didn't explain why, the main reason why you wanna do that then and not now is you wanna top dress the lawn when the grass is growing aggressively, right? Because you're putting sand over it, um, and you want the zoysia at, to, I mean, as aggressively as zoysia grows, it's pretty slow growing grass. 
but as gr you want the grass to have enough heat and sunshine to really to punch through and grow through that, that thin layer of sand that you're gonna uh, be putting down in the lawn. So that's why we wait until late spring, early summer to do that. Great question and welcome to the live stream. Hopefully uh, you are having a great time. All right, next up, we have um, Shelly Thurman. She says, I live in Kansas and my lawn has been taken over by weeds, help. Um, that stinks, Shelly. Um, what kind of grass do you have in Kansas? I, I imagine it's it's gonna be a cool season grass, I would I would think, being in Kansas. Um, and as far as what we could, assuming that's the case, like you have like a rye grass or a tall fescue or a Kentucky bluegrass, um, there's a really good video that my buddy, um, uh, George from Princess Cut Lawn Care put together, and I can see if I can find it here really quickly. Let's see if I have it, if, if search will not fail me. Uh, yeah, here we go, boom, I got it. Yep, so this video, it, it shows a really good combination that you can use that works really well on cool season grass it's, That's that has very broad coverage. You're gonna be mixing two different herbicides, but um, one is called Tenacity and another one is called Speed Zone. But as far as like a, um, as far as a product or a blend that will work really well for taking care of a, a lot of weeds on a cool season lawn, this is uh, this is the one you'd want to, this is the video to watch uh, for that. All right, great. So let me get that to you here in the chat. So we say at Shelly, um, there we go, Shelly Thurman, and I'll say um, weed killing video for cool season grass. And there you go. Yes, it's a great video, check that out. Um, I think you'll find that um, that helpful. If you, by some chance, you don't have cool season grass, you've got you know something like Bermuda, which I, I'd be surprised you had that in, in Kansas, but if you do, um, then um, the video that I did uh, a couple months ago would be helpful, um, which is for warm season grass. So I'll give you both. So I'll say for warm season, this is mine. So check that one out. But again, I'm, I'm almost positive you, you more than likely have a warm season grass of some, a cool season grass of some sort. So uh, you are covered for both both sides of it. Uh, hopefully that helps. And welcome to the live stream. I appreciate uh, you coming in to come hang out. All right, so Adam is voting for the gray. We got Adam, we got one vote for the gray, and we got a vote for the navy. Uh, Adrian is saying navy, Adam saying gray. I see what you guys are doing. You guys are gonna try and split the vote to where we gotta do both of them. I, I, I see what's going on here. I know, I, I know how you guys work. Oh, you guys work. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it going. We'll see how uh, how how the vote continues to uh, to to work itself out here. Then we got uh, Adrian saying Navy. I sharpens iron. All right, and then Daryl is going to come in and say, Ron, you won't believe my lawn is dark green. I don't understand why I'm in Mississippi. I'll send you a photo tomorrow. Well, I mean, I know why. All the all the hard work you put into it. That's why it's green. I mean, for those of you guys who don't know Daryl's lawn, his lawn's looking better than my lawn is right now. I'm sure. But this is Daryl's lawn during summer months. Let's see if this will load. Look at that. That's clean. I mean, that's even if you don't like Bermuda, you have to recognize that's a that's a good that's a, that's a good looking lawn there. That's a really good looking lawn. Um, so I got another picture of it here. That's really clean. This was after a top dress, and um, Daryl has gone full tilt uh, this year as far as like he's a member of the Golf Horse Lawn Academy. He did he, the Humic Max fertilizer, Turf Plex, the, the Miramichi Green Carbon Kitty. He did everything. The entire program couple with tons and tons and tons and tons of mowing and his grass looks uh, incredible. So yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Daryl, send me a picture and next week on the show, I'll, I'll post it up and everyone can see what your grass looks like now compared to when it was in, you know, pristine condition over the, over the summer. So uh, I'm glad your grass is doing well. Mine is starting to fall off, unfortunately. All right. Uh, Robert Rainey is a good question. He says, what are the best brands for calcitic lime? I mean, calcitic lime is calcitic lime. Um, I I typically just go to site one and just buy whatever they have in the in the big bags in the fifty pound bags. Um, there's not. It's I don't know. If there's that a brand is better than another. I mean, what, one thing I will say this: if you could find ones that um, where the prill is smaller, um, that is um, that's ideal, right? So the stuff that site one sells, like the um, the the dolomitic that I've gotten from them, it's uh, you asked about calcitic, but, but I use dolomitic on my on my lawn. It's a it's a blue bag with a golfer like holding a high finish, um, like that stuff is really good, um, and it, it was very very fine. So as far as brands, I can't necessarily recommend one, but if you have a chance to look at it, Robert, um, you want it to be finer than coarse because it's going to help it. It's just going to break down break down a bit better, right? A little faster that way. Um, but yeah, as far as brands, I, I can't give you a recommendation. I would just say if you if you can look at it and if it's got big chunks in it, maybe look for, um, you know, something else. But the stuff that site one has tends to be, um, tends to be pretty good. Hopefully uh, that helps. Hopefully that helps. 
Good on you too for getting your getting some lime down, getting you getting that pH in order, huh? That's uh, that's good stuff. All right, next up we have Michael uh, Pedroza in the house. He says, "Hey Ron, I seeded my new lawn with Jonathan Green uh, BB. I think it's Black Beauty, right? Black Beauty Ultra. And from the side view, it looks beautiful. From the top down view, it's not looking full. How long till it matures fills in? You put down six pounds per thousand. Thank you." That sounds really heavy for seed to me, but maybe that's the rate that they that it calls for. I know for for Bermuda that would be very heavy. Um, it's just it's just going to take some time, Michael. Um, you know, if it's if the grass is still, you need to see how long it's been since you seeded it. If it's been only a couple of weeks, give it more time for um, more of it to grow in. Um, but it's just it's just going to be a time thing. I, I can't tell you. Without having a picture of it, I can't tell you if it's if it's that there's some areas that are not as full where it's just that the seed didn't take there and it needs more, or you just need to give it more time. And I'm I'm, I'm leaning towards the latter that you probably just need to give it more time to uh, to really grow in and fill in and get more thick. One thing you can do that's going to help it fill in faster is mowing. So mow it like keep up with your mowing. Um, I don't know how tall you're keeping the grass, but if you can get out there and mow it a couple times a week. Uh, like twice, you know, twice a week minimum is what I always say for anyone that's serious about about having a really nice lawn. If you can do that, that is also going to help promote growth. It's going to help the lawn to fill in and thicken up a bit faster uh, as well. So, congrats on the seeding project. Looks like it went well, and uh, yeah, hopefully that that uh, that helps out. Okay, next up, Vance Woods is in the house. Has a question or more of a comment. He says, "Hey Ron, my lawn, my grass looks amazing." What should I be doing over the next several months while my Bermuda goes to sleep? Thank you, sir. Well, I mean, you can sit back with a cold lemonade and just take stock of how all your hard work paid off and kept the lawn nice and green uh, throughout this season. But really, there's not a whole lot you need to do. During the winter months, not a ton. Um, you know, if uh, if you're living somewhere where the grass or your ground it doesn't get frozen, like the ground, the ground does not freeze, and you know it's just it, kind of like how winters are in Georgia, where it gets cold and rainy and pretty much miserable, but it never really like crazy freezing temps for an extended period of time. Um, if you want to put down essential G, like something like that, some of the carbon, the granular carbon products, if you're just looking for something to do, that's something you can do over the winter. Uh, another thing is uh, if you've not done a soil test. Um, uh, that's something that's worth doing because then if your soil pH is on the low side, that is something you can correct uh, now as well. So anything else I really wouldn't do. Like if, as far as like if, if you got a soil test done and you got results back saying that, you know, your nitrogen is very low or, or so, things along those lines, I would not correct that over the winter. I would wait till spring for that. But but um, but other parameters like soil pH, that is something you can do something about uh, during the winter months. And again, uh, the... Um, the granular carbon products are something you can do as well. Like I, I applied Carbon Pro G to my lawn um, every month throughout throughout the winter. Like every, ever since summer of last year, I've been doing that. Uh, so that's an option for you. Or the other one I was telling you about, Essential G. I can show you here. We'll click over. So this guy, not that. That's what I mean. But um, but this will do the trick right here. Um, so Essential G, uh, this is a product that is made by Miramichi Green, the same people that make Carbon Pro G. I'll move my face back over where it belongs right there. Um, this is something you can do over the winter months as well. What this is going to do, it's going to um, it's going to um, increase the microbial activity in your soil. It's going to help feed your soil with biochar, which is something that, that just builds up over time and, and, and improves nutrient uptake. It also, a lot of this product is compost as well. So this product is really, it's all about improving soil quality and it's something you can do over winter months. Again, assuming you live somewhere that uh, you, your, your, your lawn doesn't turn into a block of ice for, you know, for a month or so. So something you can consider or you can just do nothing. You can do nothing, just relax and enjoy the time off. But those are your two options, soil pH adjustments, um, and, um, you know, granular carbon products are things that I would say are safe to do over winter months. Great stuff. Great question. Um, next up, um, Alex B. Yeah, he's a question. He's, he's time. Alex is chiming in about Caleb's question about using tenacity. He says, you can use it, but my experience using tenacity is not that effective or for or long lasting as a pre-emergent. Yep. Depending on your grass type, I would use something else as a pre-emergent. So Alex is kind of echoing my thoughts as well. Yeah. Tenacity is a great product. Um, well, I mean, uh, there's people that love it. There's people that hate it. The people that I talk to, most people that I talk to seem to like it and have a good result with it. So I'm not sure which camp, you know, you guys fall into or whoever's watching this falls into, but there are people that use tenacity and have a great result. But the pre-emergent 
um, aspect of it is a minor aspect. That is not the primary thing that it is good at. It's primarily good at killing weeds and not killing your grass. So uh, thanks for chiming in, Alex. I do appreciate it. Next up, we got um, Mr. Mazama Blue in the house. He says, happy Friday, everyone. Happy Friday, Ron. Happy Friday to you, sir. He says, grass is slowing down and leaves are falling. Have you ever sharpened a manual reel mower? Any tips? I have not. I've never I've never manually sharpened my um, my Scots. Um, either of my Scots mowers. I know there are sharpening kits. I know there are um, there are sharpening kits, uh, but as far as how to do them, someone I'm sure has made a video on YouTube of how to go about it. But there's there are normally kits that have they come with like the pace and come with um, a couple different options. Um, but yeah, I can um, I can just I'll, I'll just send you a link here. You can just take a look look through these um, Mazama and see which one works well. It can be done. I just not, it's just not something that I've um, I've ever done. So at Mazama Blue, um, and there you go. So check on that, that link to Amazon. It'll take you to a page. It'll show you different sharpening uh, sharpening options for it. So sorry, I'm not more help on that one, man. Um, but when it comes to sharpening equipment, I outsource that. I take that to, to the pros and let them do it. So uh, sorry, I, I don't have a better answer for you. All right. Um, next up, we have Mr. Noob, smiley face. <laughs> okay, this is Happy Lawn Day. Uh, because I get to mow today. Yeah, happy happy lawn day, right? He says, I replaced an area of St. Augustine that was infested. I put new sod. Can I apply prodiamine to the new sod area or will it harm my sod of St. Augustine? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I mean, if you want to put um, the um, the saw, if you want to do the prodiamine on the other areas, it sounds like you just did a spot, a spot replacement. Is that what you did, it looks like? Um... Yeah, I, I did replace an area. Yeah, so I would avoid the area where you just put the new sod in. I would give that plenty of time to root in nicely. I wouldn't do, um, you know, pre-emerge on that, you know, right away. Here's the thing: is it going to be okay if you if you did it? Probably, but if you're just trying to be safe, given the chance that you, you know, given the 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 the, the fact that you spent all this money and time um, installing new sod, I wouldn't go down there and throw some throw a product or herbicide on it that literally is designed to prevent. Um, root growth, right? It's something we might want to we want to wait and give some time on. So you can still do prodiamine uh, or do some pre, some kind of pre-emergent, but just avoid the area that you put that the the new Saint Augustine sod in. That is uh, what I would do. Again, out of an abundance of caution, if you were to do it, it's probably going to be okay. But just I, if you're asking me what I would do, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would put it down on on some sod I just installed. All right, we got Thin Cut in the house. He says, "Good evening, Ron. Trying to listen at work. What's going on, Thin Cut?" Um, yeah, I'm glad you're at work and glad that you're, you're trying to listen and hopefully you're getting to hear some of it. So, uh, so yeah, that's cool. And then Patrick in Texas, uh, says he put down some gypsum last year. My yard mastery soil test suggested that I apply it. So there you go. So if your soil test says to put some down, then, then go for it. I've never had to do that to my lawn or Alex's lawn. So hence why I can't tell you about applying gypsum because I've not had to do it. I've not had to do it. All right, next up, we got Humanoz, Humanoz78 in the house. It says, tearing up my rye on thin spots when turning. Okay, so I guess you're mowing with your real mower and you're making, okay, yep. First time real mowing. Is it because I'm a noob or am I using the McLean wrong? Um, only put down rye because I had dirt and waited, uh, only, only, only put down rye because I had dirt and waited until spring to plant Bermuda. Okay, yeah. So what you are experiencing, um, Humanaz, is one of the reasons, again, nothing wrong with your California, your McLean, but it's one of the reasons why I don't care for the California trimmer or the McLean. The drive system in it, um, even when you're turning, it's pretty much like freewheeling and pretty much doing a, like a burnout on the lawn when you're turning uh, or when you're, when you're standing still. So it's, you know, it, it is, unless you are, are raising it up after each pass, in other words, if, when you get to an end of a pass, if you're not like raising it and it's you're kind of holding them over still as you're trying to do a whip turn, like I'm not surprised that you're tearing up or, you know, causing extra, um, extra wear to those areas of the lawn. So what I'd say is, when you get to the end of a pass, like disengage the drive system, make your turn and then drop it and then make your pass that way. That's, that's probably going to be the best way to avoid tearing up, um, you know, tearing up the uh, the grass. I'll tell you, I get something similar with my true cut, right? So with the true cut, it's not the, it's it's the, um, the, the drive wheels. If I make a lot of um, like tight turns with the true cut, like I'm trying to do a whip turn with it, like I do with the greens mower, it does the same thing. Not quite as bad as like a, a McLean or a California trimmer will, but it can, um, you know, do cause a little bit of a bit of wear in those areas when you're making turns. The only things that really don't do that are like my green my greens mower. 
Green Tour is really good about that. Um, as far as being able to make turns without uh, causing you know a lot of excessive wear to the lawn. So what I, what I might do is a couple things. You can try maybe throttling it down a little bit and seeing if you make turns with it, you know, with it not the engine not running as fast. If that helps with like reducing it. Um, but the, the surefire way is going to be disengage it, make your turn, trying not to drop the, um, you know, trying not to get that, that drive system into the, into the, uh, the turf and then, uh, lowering it to make your next pass. That's, that's what I would recommend. Here's the thing is you being your first time and, you know, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm behind the curve here because we got to clap it up because I, you know, I didn't even recognize that you got a new mower. Got to do that. We got to do that. Given it's your first time, you as you get better at it, you're going to figure out a technique that works for you. Like a person that get that when you're first into re, get into real mowing, it's a new piece of equipment, it's a new way of cutting grass. So you know, don't take the way it's behaving now as to what you're going to get a month from now or two months from now. As you get as you use it more, you get better used to the equipment, and you're going to be able to get a better result um, with it. So I would just keep just stay the course, keep working on it, and uh, it will get better as well with time. Okay, next up we got Mr. G Free in the house. He says, hey Ron, uh, and hashtag Stripe Action Gang, another good Friday. It is. It's a cold Friday, but it is a good one. It is cold, but good. And then next up, um, uh, Alex B is chiming. Yeah, he, I guess he's chiming in about the seating. He says, at Thomas Friday, not sure what type of grass where you're located, but anywhere in the US, that seating window is pretty much closed. I wouldn't risk all that seed and water seed and watering seed this time of year. Yeah, it's just, it's just the cost, if it were just the seed, um, depending on what you paid for it, that might be worth a shot. But when you factor factor in as well that all the water you have to put down as well, is you really want to do it when you know um, it's the correct time of year and for that, so you're giving yourself the best chance to get a good result. So um, I concur, Alex, that now is not the time to do that. All right, Timothy Wolf's in the house. What's going on, Timothy? Come, thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Appreciate you as always. And then Brad has a good question. This is a good one. He says, hey, Ron, what are your shutdown storage plans for the Greens Master? Good question. So um, uh, when I decide I'm going to call it done, which is going to likely be next month, I'm gonna, I got a few more mows in that I want to get done with the Greens Master. What will happen is, and I've already started doing some of my winterization um, procedures for the Greens Master. Um, starting last month, I switched to ethanol-free gas. So just straight, um, like it's they, they call it like recreational gas. Um, so I've been only running that in the mower uh, because I don't I don't drain my mowers out when I put them up for storage um, over the winter. So the, a good way to prevent um, you know moisture from getting into the system is by not leaving um, gasoline like ethanol um, gas with ten percent ethanol in the tank because that tends to draw in um, draw in moisture. So that's thing one. Next thing I'll do is in, uh, next month I will um, call up Joey and the nice folks at Jerry Pate. And take the Greens Master down to them, have them service it, you know, change the oil, sharpen it, have it all good to go. And then I wrap it in plastic. So I get like some some big trash bags and I wrap the engine. I'm sure it's all dry. I wrap the engine, the reel, everything um, in in uh, in plastic. So it just keeps um, moisture, keeps air off of it. And uh, and then I'm good to go until next year when I'm ready to start mowing. So uh, the true cut. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with as far as service until next year because this true cut is going to be on scalping duty. So there's no point in going through and paying to get it, um, uh, get the reel sharpened when it's going to get, you know, all beaten up next next spring um, when I scalp the lawn. So for the Greens Master, it just gets a full service and it gets wrapped and put away. And then that's it. That's what I, uh, that is what I do. So hopefully that helps. All righty, um, and then uh, yeah, Alex and you see Alex and uh, um, Brad are, and and Patrick are having a sidebar. Oh, you should, and uh, Brad has another question. He says, "And for um, uh, yearly maintenance?" Yes, for yearly maintenance, I kind of went into that. Um, I just it gets a full service once per season, and then this year it was sharpened technically three times because it was sharpening at the beginning of the season when I had the eight blade reel. And then I, um, you know, in the sake of science, I uh, ran the mower into an edge of concrete, which damaged the reel, like tore up the reel and bed knife. So the eight, the eight blade reel is gone. Um, so a brand new reel went on it. So that technically kind of counts as a sharpening, but it really wasn't. It's like a brand new piece of a brand new piece of equipment. And then after that, I had one more sharpening. So really, twice. I'd say for um, for the only thing I do throughout the season is throughout, I'll pick one time during the year, depending on how the mower is cutting, and I'll just send it out to get it freshened up. So um, full service once a year, sharpening um, once during that full service, and then one time, sometime during the growing season, depending on how uh, the mower is cutting. And that's it. That's all, that's all it takes. 
And next year I may not have to do that um, because if I don't top dress, the mower shouldn't, you know, as far as like getting wear and dulling the real embed knife, it's, it's less likely for that to happen. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens if I top dress next year. Probably not, but I said that last year too, right? You saw what happened. All right, next up we got Grasshopper Lawn Care in Georgia. It says, hello, Ron, sorry I'm late. You're late, but you're here, so welcome. Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate you. Mm. Appreciate you as always. And then Meryl has a question. It says, um, Ron, can you share your experience on top dressing with carbonized PN? Do you believe this product is better than Soil Three from Super, or Soil, I say Soil Three, Soil Cube from Super Sod? Um, so, <laughs> hard to say right so the um the 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 soil cubed has um mycorrhiza in it so it has they also add some bacteria in it as well so it's um you know it's it's i'd say it's probably it's a more complete product than um than the carbonized pn the, the two are very very similar i think from a, from a cost standpoint you're going to come out better going with the soil cube like getting a bag of that delivered than than getting the equivalent full yard of, of carbonized PN, unless, I don't, cause I don't think that like site ones um, or anyone that I'm aware of um, like could, will deliver like a yard of it. You probably could get that done, but I, I don't know of anyone here locally that would do that. So from a cost standpoint, you're gonna probably come out better with the, with the soil cubed. As far as the results, um, uh, carbonized PN is incredible. Like really, really awesome. Like I, I, I did a full, top dress of just the front lawn this spring using only carbonized PN and the depth of green, like the, 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 how dark and green the lawn was like a week or two after that, it was absolutely incredible. Like if you look at some of, um, the video of my content from like, uh, like probably think that like the May ish, the April, May timeframe, you can see what the front lawn looked like. It was really, really good. Um, for the soil cubed, I'm more a fan of that um, when you do it in their leveling mix. So one thing SuperSod offers is they offer soil cubed mixed with 70% uh, USGA sand. So that blend is really awesome. As far as like like a really like a baller, no you know like no holes barred. It's like like as far as like a very 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 high quality top dressing or leveling mix. Um, the soil cubed mix with the, like their level mix is really really good. Um, as far as using just a soil cube for, for doing like some, again, top dressing, but not really leveling because it's, it's, it's going to break down. Um, it's kind of a toss up between the carbonized PN and that. But if you're talking about top dressing, I would use the soil, the super sod level mix for that. If your goal is to also level out some, some, um, uh, uneven areas of the lawn. And if you want to see, um, uh, what it looked like, like what my process was like for top dressing with soil, yay for search. Um, I will put this in the chat here for you, uh, Merrill at Merrill. Boom, there you go. So this video here that I just linked in the chat for you, that will show you like me top dressing just the front lawn using carbonized PN um, and how it went down. Very clean stuff. It's um, it's a good option as well if you if you wanted to go that route. So e the answer is yes and yes. Either one of them is gonna be is gonna be really good. All right. Next up, we have Matthew Bell in the house. He says it's still growing. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, glad to us. Thanks for letting us know, uh, Matthew. And then next, we got Timothy Wolf saying, hey Ron, with winter just around the corner, is there a certain grass height you like to leave Bermuda at to protect the roots or does it matter? In my case, I've, um, I've last year, I left the Bermuda at three quarters of an inch, so 0.75 inches. This year right now, it's the same thing, it's at 0.75 inches. Last year when the lawn came out of dormancy, I didn't have any problems, no issues or anything like that with that height, with that, that, um, that height of cut. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing this year. Could you go lower? I can't say for sure that you wouldn't have issues if you did that. It'd probably be okay, but I've not done it myself to know what issues you'd run into if you try to keep Bermuda like at half an inch um, over the winter. Uh, I, I can't really see what the benefit of, of doing that would be. Um, you know, keeping it at three quarters of an inch or an inch is is a good is a good is a good height. Um, you know, I like I prefer like that height than letting it get really tall because other because if I do that, then I'm just creating a big mess for myself. Um, come scalp time, you know, like late February, early March. So that's, so three quarters of an inch to an inch is the height that uh, that I like. That's what I did with my lawn last year. That's what I'm doing this year. And uh, Alex's lawn is uh, is the same. So hopefully that helps. It also depends on where in the country you are, Timothy. So remember, we're in Northeast, we're both in Northeast Georgia. And 
our winters are not, they're not really harsh um, usually. They're usually not, it's normally just wet, cold. You have, you may have a, 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 you know, a few days where temps get down like into really, really, like really bone chilling temps like in the 20s, but it doesn't hang around very long, right? So if you were in Arkansas, like if you were like in like lawn tools territory, um, then you might want to go a little taller, right? Because uh, because they get they get winter and it stays cold like for an, a much longer period of time than it does in Northeast Georgia. So it depends on where you are in the country as well too. In Georgia, three quarters of an inch to an inch uh, works works pretty well. Hopefully that helps. All right, so we have another vote for the gray. Ben Rutan is on the gray, on that gray life. I kind of like the gray too, because the blue is nice, but it's just all blue, right? I mean, if you're just really not a fan of navy, I mean, this this is, that's clean too, but I like, I do like the two-tone of the gray. I gotta, I gotta admit that. I, I, I'm, I'm with you guys. I kind of like the gray. So we're leaning towards that unless we get some more votes here. Oh uh, yeah, his lawn does look amazing, Lindrick. It looks, it's incredible. It looks really, really, really good. It looks pretty awesome. All right, um, Randy uh, says, I have a centipede lawn. What is good for weed control? I'm in, G in Georgia. So there is a spectricide, Randy, um, that is specific for centipede, <clears throat> for centipede lawns. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, it's the one for St. August, Augustine and um, centipede centipede laws you want something with atch with atrazine in it um yeah so this right here let me show you i'll um i'll click over um so this uh this spectrocyte i'm it doesn't have the the crazy coverage that the um that the the one that's designed for bermuda does as far as like what it will cover but um, but this will work on your centipede lawn it'll be safe to use on your centipede lawn as far as if it'll control the weeds you're after you can um let me see, they don't actually list what this one controls. Doesn't say, but this is what you, this is going to be your best bet for, um, for, uh, for centipede. Uh, it says you got dollar weed, clover, sand spur, and spurred. So a lot, all the usual suspects. And you should be able to get this at, you know what? I'm, I say you can get it at Home Depot. I've never actually seen this one at Home Depot. You may have to you may have to get this one, um, you may have to order this one on, on Amazon or something. You may have to get that one online. So I've never actually seen that particular one at any of the uh, the local big box stores. So that that's a good option for um, for you for weed control. And just make sure you follow the restrictions. It says that, you know, any, as long as temps are below 90 degrees, which they probably are. If you have a centipede lawn, you're in Georgia, it's definitely below 90s. So you could go with something uh, like this. So again, you'll probably have to order it and make sure you get the purple bottle. There's, there's another one. There's the one that I, I talk about all the time that you would not want to use. So this guy here, um, this is a, a very common one that I talk about very often that is for Bermuda grass. Do not use this one. This one you will see at Home Depot or Lowe's or Wally World. This one you don't want to, um, you don't put that one on your, on your centipede lawn. Get the, uh, the, the purple bottle. So hopefully that helps. Great, uh, great question. Let me know if I can help with, uh, with anything else. Okay, uh, Pirate2031 is ahead of the curve. He says, I am preparing for spring. My order operations plan is Scout Bermuda, Aerate, Top Dress, and Level Lawn, Starter Fertilizer. Is that good? Do I remove aeration cores before leveling? Okay, um, so uh, as far as getting ready for spring, I would get a starter for down prior to like, in other words, I, is yes. Could you do a starter for it along with your top dressing project, uh, your project? Yes. But um, really pirate, you're going to want to be waiting till like May, June ish to be top dressing. If you want it to, the lawn to bounce back faster. So, um, you know, you can get your starter for it down, assuming that's what your lawn needs with the soil, with your soil test results, say your, your soil needs um, in March. So you could do, you could do your first fertilizer app in March um, and then, um, so to 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 uh, reorder your things, yes, I would scalp. Do your starter for an application then, like say Marchish or so. Let let the lawn fill in, grow in. Let the, let some heat show up, and then when um, May June rolls around, you're in top dress se top dressing season. That's where you can continue on where you aerate, you top dress. No, actually, you aerate. Do your starter for and then top dress. So I would mix the, I would I would flip those two. I would aerate first. So do your holotine, your core aeration, and then put down the starter for it because with all the all the holes opened up, we're fast tracking that fertilizer into the soil and then top dress over it. You can do you you can do the starter for it on top of the top dressing, but 
why, right? It's got to get down in the soil anyway. So why not do aerate um, fertilizer or any other amendments you want to do to the soil and then top dress as um, the last step. Do you remove aeration cores before leveling? Depends. In my case, I don't do it. I never remove I never remove the cores. It depends on the soil type you have. Like some people have like really, really dense clay soil to where the cores get hard. Um, if you want to remove those, you can. It's not, it's not a not a bad, um, not a bad idea. Uh, just on my lawn and Alex's lawn, and also a couple other people in the neighborhood around here that have done top dressing. They they don't we've not had the need to do it because literally the stuff just it just dissolves it breaks down in our hands so in my case I don't remove the cores um, you know as part of my top dressing project if you if you want to see the whole the entire process I use for top dressing um, I've got a video from earlier this year that you can watch that will show you exactly um, my process like exactly what I'm talking to you about you'd be able to see that um, soup to nuts um, um, in this in this video so. Um, yeah, so for me, uh, if you're gonna if you're going to scalp in um, spring, like March March's time frame, you could do your starter fruit application then. Um, and you know, if you think about it, like say you do your first starter fruit, your start your for your first fruit app in say mid March, right? Um, or even April, even the beginning of beginning of April, um, you're not going to be top dressing until like mid May. So by then, your starter fruit is going to be kind of beginning to fall off. So by the time you're ready for your next fertilizer app, you're gonna be in top dressing season and then you can aerate, fert, and then top dress level. That is that is the way I um, I like to do it. It's the way I've done it every single year I've done it and we've done it for Alex's lawn. And if you just think about it, it makes sense, right? Because you wanna get that the, the fertilizer down into the soil. So hopefully that helps. Guys, it is 10 after the hour. It's time for me to wet my whistle by having a sip of lemonade. So if you guys wouldn't mind touching that like button ever so gently. It's free for you guys to do. It's a great way to support the channel, sends great vibes to the YouTube algorithm, which will cause more people to rush over and hang out with us in our long hair chat. So I really would appreciate that. All right. Great, great question. I like what you're thinking, Pyro. I like where you are. You're already, you're already getting ahead of the curve. You're trying to plan your top dressing project for next year, which is good stuff. I like it. I dig it. All right. Next up, we have two Trilla. It says, hey Ron, as far as granular and liquid goes, do they have, do you know if they have an expiration date once the bag seal is broken? I've been told if you don't use it, you lose it within that season you purchased. Um, I think it depends for granulars. I have used, I have um, had a gran a bag of granular fert that I kept over the winter and it was still fine the next, the following, um, the following spring, as long as you seal it up. So two things, right? If you're using, like say you um, got some Humic Max, right? You got a bag of Humic Max, so you do your last application whenever, say October, right? And you still got some left. I would make sure I, I, I close the bag up and, you know, and, and tie it off, make sure it's, it's sealed to where like air and moisture is not getting into it. And then you should be fine. Uh, as far as liquids go, same thing. As long as they're kept in a cool and dry place, a dry area, they should be fine. As long as they're kept sealed, you should be uh, you should be good to go. The the real thing you have to worry about when it comes to use it or lose it, uh, I think when I think about those types of things, I think about like um, like herbicides. Like when you mix those up, you want to use those um, you know in a in a reasonable period of time over a, in a couple of days or so. You don't want to wait. You know you don't want to mix like good example. You won't want to mix like Celsius. Um, this summer and then leave it in a backpack sprayer till next year and use it. I mean, I, you just you wouldn't want to do that. But as far as liquid or granular, depends on if you do a good job closing the bag off um, so you keep air and moisture out of it. And then also where it's being kept. So if it's kept in a cool, dry area, that will help too. So uh, so hopefully that that um, that helps answer your question. A good example, like my um, my my PGR that I'm using is that bottle's like uh, just two years old. The um, I'm trying to think. Like when I was still using Brandt Supreme Green, I would go because I, I wouldn't go through an entire uh, jug of Brandt Supreme Green in a season. I I would use one jug from season to season, and there was no no issues with it. So as long again, kind of beat a dead horse. As long as it's kept cool, dry, closed tightly, it's sealed off nicely. You should be uh, should be good to go. Should be good to go. All right. Next up, we have good um, Patricia Edwards. She says, "Good evening, all. Hey, Ron." Uh, thanks for suggesting that I reach out to Princess Cut. Uh, George says he said to use Speed Zone for wide garlic that is taking over my lawn here in New England. We will see. Thanks. Great. That's awesome. Yeah, George is a great guy um, for cool season. Uh, him, Lawn Whisperer, you know, those are great guys you can reach out to. Uh, they'll, they're always um, willing to help out. So hopefully we'll see how the Speed Zone does 
on your lawn. You have to report back and uh, and let us know. We have um, the notorious Mr. Brett in the house. Brett's Grascapades. What's going on, Brett? He says, what's up, gents? Hopefully you're doing well, Brett. Um, you know, Brett, we want to know, man, next year, you know, you, you you move down south, you got the Bermuda in, you got the real mower, you know, inquiring minds want to know, is there going to be a top dressing project next year? You know, we want to we want to see it. We want to see it, man. Because that lawn, you're, uh, you have the Bimini, I think it was called, Bimini Bermuda. Is that what you, the kind of grass you have? Uh, it, it looks good. It'd look even better if you top dressed it, so... And I'm sure uh, Alan would be down to help with, uh, you know, pushing that leveling rake around, helping with the uh, with the, the project work. So uh, definitely let us know. All right. Uh, next up, Robert Mohores saying, um, uh, uh, Ron, having tech issues on posting tonight. Um, oh, okay. You guess you can't. Yeah. You're having problems posting. I'm not sure what's going on, Robert. Nice harbor. Delta. Um, oh, that's right. You used to fly. You told me you used to fly a 747. Nice picture, man. You, you updated the uh, the avatar. It's a nice, it's a nice picture. He says, "Okay, late on the spectacle, uh, G. So Poa is growing. Do you think on Zeon? What do you think on Zeon up in Rally? Tribute total or coastal? Sorry if I repeated my question. Um, no, no problems if you repeat it. Um, it depends on how much your budget is. If you already have, tri if you can afford tribute total, that that kills pretty much everything. I mean, it's very. I mean, that's that's your that's like that's. Uh, I mean, comparing tribute." And coastal, really, it's um, you're kind of comparing apples to oranges. And also, tribute total uh, is all post-emergent herbicides, I believe. I don't think there's any kind of I don't think there's any pre-emergent in tribute. Uh, if out of what you're describing, if all you're trying to target is the POA, um, then I would go with the coastal. I would do coastal because one, it has the uh, it has the um, amazoquin and simazine, both of which will target POA. Um, and then the prodiamine it will help um, will help you going forward. It'll help prevent um, you know new um, new germination of the weeds that you're dealing with. So that that will be my vote. It's also a lot less expensive than um, than tribute total unless you already got tribute. But um, but coastal is what I would um, I would go with based on what you are are describing. That would be my um, my recommendation. That is what I would do. And I will put um, a link to um, what, what did I do here. Yep, I'll put a link to Coastal in the chat if you, assuming you don't already have it, Robert. Um, and uh, there you go. But of those two, that's that's what I would I would do. All right, great great question, and I approve of the new avatar, man. It looks really cool. It's nice hardware, nice hardware in that in that picture. All right, next up we have uh, Shelly. She says, "Thanks so much, Ron. Can't wait to see uh, try one of these products. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much, Shelly. You're very very welcome. Let us know how it goes." And then next up, we have Justin Aguilar. He says, how much should I water my grass throughout the winter from West Texas with Bermuda grass? Thank you. In Northeast Georgia, we really don't typically have a need to water very often. Like if I get if I go two weeks without getting any water, I'll run a, an irrigation cycle. Um, but you shouldn't have to be putting a ton of water on the grass, Justin, depending on, I mean, West Texas, it's like El Paso area thereabouts. Um, if it's still getting, if it's like dry, you're not, not getting any moisture, you, you do want to put some water on the lawn, but I wouldn't run anywhere near the kind of irrigation, um, the kind of watering cycle that you do during during the summer or spring. So at most, at absolute most, once a week at most, and that's if, you, and that's if you're not getting any precipitation at all, um, is, is what I would do. Really, every 10 days is probably going to be just fine too. Uh, but yeah, you don't you don't need to run you don't need to put a ton of water on it. But you don't want you don't want to also dry out uh, too much either. So again, speaking from experience here in Georgia, we get rain often enough during the winter that it's it's actually fairly rare that we need to run um, irrigation. But you being in West Texas, you might need to. I'd say every week to every ten days, every seven to ten days, if it, there's been no rain, uh, consider running a single irrigation cycle, and then you should be should be good to go. Great question. All right, next up we got Patrick uh, in Texas. Says, been using Carbon Pro G monthly. What are your thoughts on Carbon Pro L liquid? Uh, Carbon Pro L doesn't list the same ingredients on the label and um, and thinking about switching. Okay, that's a great question, Patrick. So the only thing that Carbon Pro G and Carbon Pro L really have in common is that they have Carbon Pro in the name. Um, the, the liquid is not a substitute for the granular and the granular is not a substitute for the liquid. Uh, the... Uh, the the Carbon Pro L is a great product. It's a good. It's a it's a great product. I used it last year. Uh, got good results with it. The big thing with it is that when I was putting together the Golf Course Lawn Academy, um, which I, I think you remember, but but when I was doing that, 
uh, I had to, um, I wanted to make sure I used products or, or, or listed products in there that people could easily get their hands on. I also was able to partner with Miramichi Green and um, between their um, their release zero products and their other their other um, micronutrient products, it's, uh, you know, it's, I mean, Carbon Pro L is good, but the stuff that I'm using now is better and you can get it. Like you can literally have it mailed to you. The only way to get Carbon Pro L or Carbon Pro G is via Site One. You actually have to go to a Site One, and not everybody has one nearby. Um, and you know, this, the the stuff that I'm using now is is frankly a better product. So, um, if if you're going to use both of those, I would say you if you want if you're it's not an either or thing. If you're um, looking between Carbon Pro L and Carbon Pro G, like you're going to stay with the Carbon Pro line of products, I would just use both of them because they they complement each other. Um, and one is not a substitute for the other, if that helps. So, um, so yeah, that, that's, those are my thoughts on it. Both excellent products. Um, I mean, Carbon Pro G is made by the same people that are, that make really zero and NutriCalc, which is the product that I use to replace, um, you know, Carbon Pro L. So, uh, yeah, you're going to get re great results, uh, either way. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that, that helps. All right. Next up, we have Omar Garcia in the house. Um, he says, what's up, Ron? Hope everyone is doing well today. In your opinion, what is the softest, uh, grass warm? Uh -huh. Um, I, um, I real mow Kentucky bluegrass, uh, can, uh, transition zone. I am at Disney world and stepped on what felt like a cloud. Um, I don't know, man. It's, it's hard to say. What's the softest? What is the softest? Um, Zoysia is not, I don't find Zoysia to be very soft. I find it to be a bit like, um, a bit firm. Some people think it's soft. I don't think so. Um, I think I mean, Bermuda is actually pretty soft if you cut it short. Uh, Bermuda, Zoysia, um, not St. Augustine. I, I'm going to say Bermuda or Zoysia. Uh, those, those would be my, my votes. Centipede, um, some people, so I've not, I've not personally had a centipede lawn, but the appearance of it um, it looks like a fairly soft grass. So any any of those would be um, could would work well out of Bermuda and Zoysia. I would I would be biased more towards um, Bermuda if it's cut short. It's very it's a pretty soft grass. Uh, Zoysia, depending on the kind you get, can also be pretty soft too. So either of those can um, can work well. But you're saying that you use you have Kentucky bluegrass. So I mean, if you're using if you're rolling with KBG, and that's what you have, just keep just keep it. I would just keep. I wouldn't. I would not try and get away from um, the grass you already have to go to um, to Bermuda or, uh, or or Zoysia. So hopefully that helps. Um, I'm not sure what kind of grass they have at Disney World. I imagine it's a warm season grass of some sort because um, they're in Florida. So, uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what kind of grass they have at Disney World. But, and you also keep in mind too, Disney World, like they have really, really good, um, I mean, as far as like their grounds crew, they have really, really good people working on that grass to keep it nice and short and cut. So, you know, I would not look at the grass at Disney World and say that is an example of what all grass in the Southeast United States can look like. Kind of like if, you went, if you've ever been to Augusta National, like literally, like the best way I can describe it is imagine the best grass you've ever seen. Like seriously, close your eyes. Imagine the best grass you've ever seen. And it's better than that. Like literally, that's that's how good the grass at Augusta is. But like to say that I walked on Augusta National, um, like on the fairways and be like, you know, this is like to take that and say that now I'm going to I'm going to convert that to um, to home. It's just not. You know, it's like it's a totally different level of care. And when, and whenever people are, are there doing the masters, what you're really walking on is Bermuda that's been overseeded with rye. So rye grass is um is pretty soft. So, you know, there there you go. The answer is I guess cool season, Omar. All right, great, great question. All right, next up we have uh Victor Stams in the house. He says, Another great session, Ron. Uh question. I have a combination of turf type tall fescue and Kentucky bluegrass in Illinois. I have a cobalt electric mower. How low should I mow my lawn? So turf type tall fescue likes to be mowed tall. So three inches or, or higher is what you really want for that. Um, and if it's a if it's a blend, meaning that you know the the turf type tall fescue and the KBG are all mixed in together, like the the fescue is going to dictate the mowing height for the KBG. Make, like Kentucky bluegrass can be can to well, tolerates being cut shorter than that, but turf type tall fescue really needs to be mowed higher to uh, to do well and to look well. So um, three inches or taller, three inches or taller is what you're going to go for. Three inches really are on the lower end. I don't know how how high up that cobalt goes, but um, 
I'd imagine you can get three inches um, out of it, maybe maybe even a bit more. So as as high as tall as the mower will allow you to mow is what I would would do for for the fescue. Hopefully that helps. And I appreciate you asking the question and being part of the live stream. Thank you much. I really do uh, really do appreciate it. All right, Archie Amos. Here, Archie is like, "What's up, young man?" So it's like a you know, I, I always like this. Like I'm talking to my elders. He's like, you know, he's like, give me a sign of approval. So whatever. I, I appreciate it, Archie. He says. Uh, question. I live in Lake, uh, Wiley. Yeah. Lake Wiley. Of course I live in Lake, Lake Wiley, South Carolina and have Bermuda grass. I'm from New York state and I'm not sure what pre-emergent to use. Please advise. Um, so you, you live in South Carolina, you have Bermuda. Okay. So you have a couple of options. If you're going to, if you're asking this, I'm assuming you haven't put down pre-emergent as yet, in which case I'm going to say, um, I, I would recommend a product called coastal which had the pre-emergent component of that, of that herbicide is prodiamine. Um, the reason why I'm recommending coastal instead of just straight prodiamine is that if you're doing it now, you're a little bit late in the season for applying um, pre-emergent. So we want to also use something that has um, the ability to kill weeds that have already started germinating. So like your POA is something that, you know, I'm sure you guys deal with in South Carolina as well too. So um, Coastal has Prodiamine, which is your pre-emergent, and also has Amazoquin and Simazine, which will kill uh, weeds that have already started germinating. So that would be my recommendation. If you are, um, if you're asking, like you, so you've already done pre-emergent, um, which I, I, I'm thinking you haven't, but if say you say that we could fast forward back to, or rewind back to say September. In that case, you could just use just straight Prodiamine on your lawn as your pre-emergent and that would work well. So something, depending on the size of your lawn, Something like this, this is like a little five ounce um, container of Prodiamine. This, the math I think works out to um, 6,000 square feet of coverage out of this little container. So if you have a really relatively small lawn, uh, this will do the trick. So um, just depends on the size of your lawn. But if, but if you're doing it now, you're gonna wanna use something like uh, like Coastal um, Archie since it's you're, you're a bit late in the season um, for, for getting pre-emergent down. So hopefully that helps. I appreciate you um, chiming into the chat and uh, hopefully all is well at Lake uh, Wiley, South Carolina. All right, uh, next up we got uh, uh, Vil uh, Wilvert Perez. Um, he's saying, uh, hello, Mr. Ron. Um, what can I do to stop um, having shallow grassroots? Thanks for all your time. What can you do for having shallow, stop having shallow grassroots? Um, I mean, so a couple of things. If you if your soil is well balanced, right? So you've got the right um, amount of my, of nutrients. So you've got um, particularly, so you've got um, your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. Particularly having enough phosphorus um, in in your soil that is going to help promote promote root growth. Um, but that coupled with assuming that that's the case, right? You've got enough of the macros in your in your soil. Um, in addition to that, just regular mowing and just in general, just taking care of your of your lawn, you shouldn't have an issue with with um, with the grass having shallow roots. I mean, only other thing I can really think is if you have some kind of debris in the lawns, so if you got like a lot of rocks or you know debris left over from construction, like those are things that can um, can cause you to have shallow roots in your lawn. But I mean, really, if if you are using a a, a fertilizer that is correct for your soil type. Um, that is giving the, the grass the right um, ratios of nutrient, you shouldn't really have, and you're mowing it regularly, that's a big part of it, right? Like you're keeping up with your mowing, um, you know, the, the, as far, you shouldn't have an issue with, uh, with having shallow roots in the, in the lawn. So hopefully that helps, but I mean, as far as like what helps promote root growth, phosphorus does that, but I'd only apply that to your, um, to your soil if your soil test results, you know, say that you need that. And the way to find out, is to use a soil test kit like this. This one from my soil. These are super, super easy to use. They take a couple, it's literally a few minutes um, to collect the samples. You mail them out in a week from, from the time you mail it out. It usually, unless they get backed up, you're gonna get an email with your results and it'll tell you exactly what's going on with your soil, what's missing, what fertilizer to apply, all that all that fun jazz. And then you'll be well on your way to having uh, not shallow roots in your, uh, in your lawn. So hopefully that helps, uh, Wilvert. Um, and if I can help with anything else, uh, let me know. Appreciate the question. Uh, let's see. Um, Demetrius says, um, will actually do anything this time of year, especially in Florida? Depends on where, I mean, that's a good point, Dimitri. I, I, as far as the, the question about the, the, the centipede lawn, um, that's a good point. I, um, I, I don't know how effective it really would be. If it's, if he's in South Florida where temps are still higher, 
he might get something out of it. Um, the product that the product I was showing him, the uh, the the Spectre side, isn't terribly expensive. So if it if it doesn't work, you're out ten fifteen dollars. It's not you're not you're not out a ton of money um, from that from that standpoint. So it's worth a shot. If it doesn't work, then or you don't get as good a result, you can always wait till he always wait till next spring um, at a more opportune time to apply it. But, um, you know, given the fact that it's not that expensive, I would, I would give it a go if he's, if he's got a lot of weeds in Islam that he's dealing with. Great point though. Great point. All right. Um, next up, uh, Archie is saying gray. So we have another vote for the gray. So I think the gray is going to win out. It's looking at, looking at that <laughs> G free is like, he votes for both. Uh, we'll see. And then, uh, Patrick, uh, votes gray all day. Robert is blue. We might end up doing both because I want to. I want to. You know, we'll see. We'll 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 see. I mean, Gray is definitely in the lead right now, but we may end up doing both of them. We'll have to. We'll have to see here. Merrill, we got another one for Blue, so it's kind of split. It's kind of split. Uh, there we go. So John Holmes is chiming in at Randy Cobb. Scott's bonus S is safe for centipedes. So there's another option for uh, for centipede. I'm not familiar with the Scott bonus S product, so look into it. Check the label. Um, but I no reason to believe that um, that you're not correct, uh, John. But just check the label. Um, Randy, and if that's that's another option for you, you might even be able to find that at your uh, your local Home Depot, perhaps. I'm not, I don't recall seeing that one, but maybe it's uh, maybe it's there. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Daryl is saying thanks, Ron, for all the kind words. I, when I found your channel last year, I knew that I wanted a lawn like that. It was Ron's hope, and the channel got me an awesome lawn. Thanks again. You're very very welcome. Really, it's just your hard work, man. Like when um, when you showed me your top dressing project, when you had. Like you made up your big leveling, your le leveling rig, and you're pulling it with your um, your four wheeler. Like you, you did a lot. You put a lot of work in this year, and you got the result. That's what it is. Just consistency in working on the lawn, and you get the result. You know, kind of like, kind of like most everything else in life. But uh, but yeah, I I appreciate you, sir. I appreciate you being part of the Golf Force Lawn Academy and also watching the content. And I'm glad that you are happy with the results that you got in your lawn this year. All right. And then Omar has another tip for keeping uh, fertilizer fresh. He says for granular leftovers, I put them in a five gallon bucket and put them in a closet we don't use. So that's another option as well. Yeah, so cool, dry place. Um, that's ideal if you can also seal so you keep air and moisture away from it. Um, and that you should be just, should be good to go. Should be good to go in that case. All right, um, Carter's Lawn Care has a question. He says, I am in the golf course, go golf course, <laughs> Gulf Coast of Alabama. I thought about seeding rye and then in the spring with zoysia. How do I make that transition? Okay, so you're, are you talking about, you're talking about overseeding your zoysia, your existing grass that's zoysia with rye. Um, if you were going to do that, if, if I'm understanding correctly, if you're going to do that, um, you would want to have done that like late August, early September. Um, so you're already out of the window for, for, for that, for the rye overseed. Um, and then when spring rolls around to get rid of it to allow your zoysia to come back, you would just get rid of the rye by using something like katana or celsius, something that will target the ryegrass and kill it off. Um, so you're, you're getting rid of the competition for the zoysia. I think that's what your question, what your question is. I mean, if your question is when to seed zoysia, here's the thing: zoysia I would not try and grow from seed. Like I, I did it this year, and it literally took like all summer. Um, and that was grass that was baby. They got water all the time. It got fertilizer. I mean, I cut it frequently. I mean, you guys saw, I mean, I, it was really babied. And and zoysia, you think Bermuda grows slow or Bermuda grows slow from seed? Zoysia grows really slow from seed. So if I would not, um, if your question is like making the transition to a zoysia lawn overall in the spring, I wouldn't do it with seed. I would, if you really want a zoysia lawn, I would just do sod. I would get rid of the rye grass and then do sod for zoysia because it, it grows incredibly slow. It's a very, very slow growing uh, grass from seed. So hopefully uh, that helps, Carter. Uh, if you need anything else, let me know. Let me know. All right. Demir's in the house. He says, what's up, Ron? Um, late to the stream, but looking forward to hearing some good turf talk tonight. Thanks for that, Demir91. Hopefully, sir, we're going to get you on next week. So guys, as you know, Demir is a golf super um, at a course out in Colorado. Uh, this week he was still busy with tying up the course, getting it ready, getting it buttoned up for, um, you know, putting it to sleep for this winter. So hopefully the goal is, fingers crossed, is for next week. So I think it'll be November 12th. I think is what the next next week is. November 12th is what we're shooting for, uh, Demir. So we'll see if that happens. Um, it'll be fun. It'll be fun just to have you on, man. People, you know, as much as people like me, like having a guest on is also fun uh, as well. You can do all your all your koozies and talk. We can talk about like everything that goes into 
golf course maintenance, and you can tell us how we're doing it right and how we're doing it wrong uh, on our home lawns. So it should make for a great, a great time. So looking forward uh, to that. Thanks for coming to hang out. I appreciate it. And then Tom B has a question. It says, um, Ron, hey, Ron, do you growth regulators? I guess, do you use growth regulators? I do. I do use growth regulators. The one that I use is um, Trinexa Pack Ethyl. So I've used Tnex in the past, but here now recently in the last like month, month and a half, two months, um, the nice folks at Syngenta, uh, granted it was late in the season, but better late than never, they have now made um, Primo Max Right, the OG of like of um, of Trinexapac ethyl as far as like PGRs go, available in a smaller container. Like you know, normally Primo Max you have to buy it like in a gallon. It's like three hundred plus dollars. It's, it's not inexpensive. Um, so they listen to the DIY community, and now it's available in a four ounce container, which is pretty awesome. Um, and this is what I will be using on my lawn going forward. It's 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 uh, again the active ingredient is Trinexapac ethyl. Um, I use PGRs on my lawn starting in um, late April, early May, all the way through September. That's that's what I what I do. Depending on what the lawn what the lawn's looking like, um, uh, it may or may not get an application in September. But definitely like late spring, um, like you know Aprilish through August, it definitely gets PGR. Sometimes an application in September as well too, if the lawn is um, is is still growing. Uh, pretty aggressively, and again, you can get you can get the uh, the name brand stuff if you guys are if you guys are are so in inclined. It was really really cool that um, that Syngenta um, um, has made that possible, or, or you know has has partnered with us to to to, to talk about it. Like I think I I want to say that this this channel was the first to get our hands on this, and I'm still going to make a piece of content on it, but I'm probably going to reserve that until spring of next year because right now no one's really using PGR on their lawn, so no it wouldn't get very much very much viewership. But um, but yeah, I mean, the only reason why they make it in this size is for is for home homeowners, right? There's no one else really like in the professional turf, like a, a golf course. You know, you show them four ounces of uh, of PGR, they're gonna laugh at you. They're they're not gonna they're not gonna get any uh, any reach out of that. So it's really cool that they made that um that available. It's got a measuring container built into it. And if you are interested in that, um, Tom B. Um, I've got a link to it here. So ronhenry.com forward slash PGR. It'll take you to that, which you can get from Do My Own. And uh, and yeah, you'll be, you'll be good to go. And I've got several videos on using PGR, just depending on, um, you know, if, if you're not familiar with how to uh, to mix it and apply it and all that fun stuff. All right, um, let me roll down here really quick. I got a couple of super chats. I got to get them first up. We have Mr. LG in the house. Super chat received. He says, hey, Ron, I love your show. I love your dedication and I love to drink. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you so much, LG. I appreciate that. I will have a sip of my lemonade um, courtesy of your super chat. Uh -huh. Awesome. Thanks so much, sir. I really appreciate the kind words. And then next up, we have CR with a super chat. Super chat received. He says, I've always enjoyed your content. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much, CR. I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks for all the love and support, you guys. It's been a, it's been a fun season. Growing, the channel's grown a lot. Um, the live stream's gotten better. Like, you know, I've updated more lights and stuff, trying to give you guys a better, you know, better experience. Uh, so yeah, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. We got some guests on, so we're just gonna, we're gonna keep plugging along with it. All right. Uh, Thomas Statham says, hey, Ron, can you can a reel mower be used on Centipede? How low can you go on Centipede? I'm in Florida. I I'm pretty sure you can reel mow Centipede, um, Thomas. How low can you mow it? I'm, that's a good question. I'm not sure on that one. Centipede is such um, an uncommon um, grass type. Uh, let's see. Let's, I'll look it up. We'll, we'll ask the Google. Although Google's not always the best um, the best. Um, the best uh, answer for that because it, it assumes you're using a rotary mower, but it, according to the Google, it's saying you can cut centipede at one to one and a half inches, which you can do definitely an inch with a real mower. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're mowing at one inch, you've got the time to be able to do that. I would absolutely real mow it and keep it at, at one inch, and it, I'm sure it'd look pretty pretty nice at that um, at that cutting height. I just have never really used. I've never mowed centipede. Um, or worked with it myself personally, but if it's if that's to be believed that an inch to inch and a half is good, let's go for the lower end of that at one inch, and that is definitely real mode territory. Lawn will look awesome, uh, real mode. Very good. And then Archie's chiming in, he says, yeah, I have not done it as yet. So yeah, Archie, if you've not done it as yet, then uh, Coastal is what I would go with. I mean, if, we, if ne next year, um, for the fall pre-emergent, if you decide you're gonna go with um, Prodiamine or whatever you decide to go with, uh, September, like the month of September is the window when you want to get your fall pre-emergent down. And then for the spring, 
your, your spring pre-emergent, which is gonna help take care of the warm season, the warm weather weeds. So like your crab grasses, spurge, those types of weeds. We're gonna wanna get that down in uh, February, March. Like late February, early March, that's gonna be your time frame for spring pre-emergent. You need to do it twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall, and that's gonna do a lot towards keeping uh, weeds out of your lawn. So hopefully that helps. Um, I've got content on it, but I'm sure during the live stream, we're, you know, we're still doing these. Um, it's a topic that we'll 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 cover again. All right, um, Tom V. Yeah, so uh, I'll go into this a little bit more. He has a follow-up question. He says, "Hey Ron, do you use uh, growth regulators in your program?" I do, Tom. He says, "I have read these can keep the lawn very green and thick. What time of year do you start stop applying this? Do you mix it with your fur?" So a lot in that. Let's unpack it all. Um, can they help your lawn get um, green and thick? They can help. They do help with density because instead of the lawn growing up, it it tends to um, it gives the lawn more opportunities to grow laterally. It, it what plant growth reg regulator does? It suppresses um, jabrilic or trinexapac ethyl anyway. It suppresses jabrilic um, acid synthesis, which again prevents the prevents the grass from growing tall. So what what tends to happen on my lawn whenever I put PGR on it? Um, for the first couple of days, I get a you if you if you don't use any kind of furt with it, you get a slight yellowing, a slight bronzing. That only lasts for a couple of days. The the first time you mow, that'll go away and you're good to go. And then what's going to happen is, in addition to the lawn not growing any uh, um that much anymore, it's going to slow down quite a bit. Is it does get thicker and denser. I don't I can't say that the lawn that the PGR itself causes the lawn to like it, it has an effect that causes the lawn to be darker. The fact that that it, that it doesn't grow as tall, um, and that you essentially end up with older grass or older leaf tissue in the lawn, older leaf, that tends to be darker. Kind of like if you look at a tree, right? If you look at like new leaves in a tree, they tend to be lighter. The older leaves in a tree tend to be darker. Same thing with your grass. The the, the grass can um, if it gets dense and it tends to the the you know you're not cutting off all this new growth all the time. You, it has it has a darkening effect on the on the turf. So I think when people say that PGR causes the grass to turn dark green, it's not that PGR is really doing it. It's kind of a byproduct of that, more so than PGR saying you put PGR on your grass and it's going to get dark green. It's not like it's like it's directly causing that. As far as do I mix it with fertilizer? Yes. So as far as the concoction that I use, when I put down PGR, I'll use Trinexapac ethyl, and I will use. Um, a couple of things. So I use Trexapec ethyl, and I also use the Carbon Kit products along with um, Turfplex. So as far as the fertilizer that I use, is this guy, uh, Turfplex, a 22.3. I mix this at the low rate of six ounces per thousand. So what I tend to do, Tom, is I do my PGR app. Um, I know people, some people use growing degree days. I only just do it once a month. It's just that tends to work for me. So the beginning of the month, um, during the growing season, when it's the window opens for me to do PGR, I will do um, uh, one out, well, one ounce of um, Tnex. That's what you guys should be doing on Bermuda. Um, so 0.25 ounces per thousand square feet, so one full ounce with four gallons of water in a backpack sprayer, along with six ounces per thousand of this of the Turfplex, and then I'll do another two or three ounces of each of these, which are. Uh, the Release Zero and NutriCalc products from Miramichi Green. So it's like a micronized carbon product that helps with nutrient uptake. It helps with the um, it helps the fertilizer work more effectively and helps PGR work more effectively. Anything that that, that is a foliar app, this will improve um, uptake. So so yeah, that's my concoction. I mix these all with PGR. I don't do PGR apps where it's just plant growth regulator by itself. I always mix it with um, with fertilizer. And in most cases, also with the uh, the Miramichi Green uh, Carbon Kit, Release Zero, NutriCalp, and Biospectrum. And if you're interested in, in those, I've got those on the Golf Course Lawn Store. Shameless plug uh, right here. So if you go to golfcourselawn.store um, and you scroll down to here, the very first thing is the Golf Course Lawn Carbon Kit, which is something that I, is a product, a package that I partnered with Miramichi Green to create. Again, it consists of three components. The NutriCalp, which oh, sorry, the sorry, the Release Zero, which is 10% micronized carbon. The big thing with Nutri with um, Release Zero is it helps it re it's like a supercharger, a catalyst for nutrient uptake for foliar applications. It doesn't have to be um, only uh, fertilizer. If you're using like herbicides, the same thing. It makes it it's more effective. Uh, and then next up, you have uh, NutriCalp, which is 24% um, kelp extract. Again, it's like think of, a, of a, as like a as like a biostimulant and vitamin booster for your lawn. And then finally, you have Biospectrum, which is a microbial package. Now, reason why my Biospectrum is a good is is important 
is if you think about it, a lot of times whenever we are, um, you know, when you start cutting your, your, your lawn short regularly and you're, you're doing a lot of mowing, we, because we're always injuring the grass, shortcut turf tends to have more issues with disease or more, be more prone to issues with disease um, than, than grass that is allowed to grow taller. So to counteract that, we apply fungicides. And fungicides are like literally like dropping an atomic bomb on the microbial activity um, in your soil. So that's why in addition to the Release Zero, the NutriKelp, um, I thought it was important to also add, um, you know, the biospectrum in there as well, because this helps to restore some of that microbial activity, it helps to restart that microbial activity that gets, um, you know, injured or pulled down by the fact that we, we tend to apply fungicides more often to our lawns. Um, if you're cutting your grass very short, then, then uh, is the norm. So that's what gets mixed in. That's what goes in with my PGR apps, and uh, hopefully that helps. And I've got videos, on the, uh, tons of content, um, showing you how to mix all that and how I how I particularly uh, do it. Great, great question. All right, uh, next up we have Andrew Phillips here in the house. First, we got another vote for Gray from Randy Cobb. It looks like the Gray is winning out. And then uh, Andrew Phillips is saying, "Hey Ron, I am in Dallas, Texas uh, area, and I have common Bermuda. I applied my first round of pre-emergent in September. Okay, good. I applied Dithiopair." When should I apply my um, second round before dormancy? It depends. Um, so look at the look at the uh, the label for dithiopyr, um, Andrew. Off the top of my head, I don't know what the what the annual rate or the limit is for dithiopyr. Um And if you if you did not if you did not get to that rate in your September app, and you're I guess you're doing like a fall split app, then you can do a follow up. But I mean, really, you shouldn't need to. You really shouldn't need to. I mean, again, like with Alex's lawn this year, we did I did a single app. The two of us, we did a single app on his lawn of prodiamine in late January, early February. Just one app at at rate. Um, and that took care of weed issues in his lawn like throughout the entire summer. He had no issues in, with weeds in his lawn at all um, throughout this entire growing season. So I don't know that you necessarily need a second round of, of, of dithiopyr, assuming that you applied it per label, you watered it in, you use the correct rates, you should be good to go. Unless the label call, specifically calls for that or the product you're using specifically calls for a, a follow-up application, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do one. Um, so it's kind of hard to know um, without knowing the rates you used um, and what product exactly, if it's a straight dithiopyr or if you're using something that contains that, that, says that you should do another app. So um, so hopefully um, hopefully that helps add a little bit of clarity, but I mean, uh, if you're doing a split app, then yeah, another one um, another one will work, but you, you really shouldn't have to. You shouldn't need to do that. All right, uh, I'm at Mazama Blue. Um, he says, yeah, to out over to promote deeper roots, also try watering uh, deep and infrequently. That's another good point on Mazama Blue. It's a good point as far as like you're watering that also, um, uh, can ways into uh, how uh, how the roots grow in your lawn, and then Dee Dee's is being the spelling bee. Um, she, she's getting on us saying gray as long as it's spelled with an e. So it's gray with an e. Is, is it gray with an? So this is you're saying this is gray with an e. It's not gray with an a. What's the difference between gray with an e and gray with an a? Let's see, I, I have to look that up after the fact. I'm sure there's a difference. Um, gray versus gray. Now, now you got me. Now you got me wondering here. Gray. Uh, here we go. Gray uh, is more common in British English. So in the Queen's English, it's spelled with an e, uh, whereas the with the a is more American. So if you use gray with a with an e, it's more British. And if it's a American, did not know that. Cool. Now we know. And you know what? I I, I like that DDS because given that you know we're we're going to say a, an air of sophistication. The gray with the E works. All right, we'll go. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. All right. Demir's chiming in about PGRs. He says, um, "Tom B, PGRs are great for most PGRs. You want to apply them when the turf is actively growing. Be careful about applying if air temp is above 85 degrees. You can get tip burn. Also, you can absolutely mix with fur. So there you go. You have someone that actually does it for a living that is saying." They are the bee's knees, and that mixing with FERT is a good idea. Also, there are PGRs that are root absorbs versus foliar absorbs, so be sure to read the labels. Great, great points. Um, also, great point, um, uh, Demir. The, the one that's most commonly used on, on home lawns, um, which is Trinexapac ethyl, that's foliar. And the one for, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, um, 
The one that is commonly, that's root absorbed. Another one you're talking about, um, the one you're talking about, Demir, is, um, oh, what is it called? I can see the, I can see the bottle. It's a green, it's a, it's like a white and green um, bottle. Uh, but I know, I know what you're talking about. I know, I know the one that you, the one you are. I actually have a video on it. Uh, but that one I think is not, is not labeled for use on home lawns. That is why I, um, I stopped talking about that one or stopped, I stopped recommending that one. They were, they were going through the process of doing it, but then they, um, if you look at like the read the EPA, they just, they, they pulled it, they pulled uh, doing it. Um, let's see here. It is, I'm trying to find the, yeah, Tide Pack Low. That's what it's called. That's the one that is, that is fault, that is root absorbed. I knew I could look it up. So I found it, yeah. So Tide Pack Low is root absorbed. Um, Trinexapac ethyl is the foliar absorbed. And Tide Paclo is not rated, at least last time I looked, is not rated for use on residential turf. You can use it on golf courses and sports fields and that kind of thing, but you're not supposed to put it on your home lawn. So there you go. Thanks for that, sir. I appreciate you chiming in as uh, as always. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We got um, Pierangelo Passini saying, I live in Austin, Texas in a new build community. So the sod was laid... <laughs> I was laid on trash. That stinks. That's not good. <laughs> this is, uh, I want to start uh, using a 20 inch rotary for next year and really take charge of my lawn. My issue is my, my lawn is not flat. Uh, yeah, so there's a couple ways you can go about that. What kind of grass do you have? Um, I will assume it's Bermuda. Okay, let's say this, let's assume it's Bermuda. What you can do, there's a couple ways to get around this or to, to improve the levelness of your lawn, the flatness of your lawn is a top dressing is a great way to do that. It's a lot of work, but it's, I can't think of anything else really that, that will produce a really, that really smooth golf course lawn look, um, other than doing a good top dressing. And what you're going to find on um, Pier Angelo is while you will start out with a rotary. And again, I'm assuming you have warm season grass like Bermuda. Um, while you'll start out with a rotary, once you get the lawn flat, um, you know, if you have the time, that's the big thing with, uh, you know, if you have the time, real mowing Bermuda, it looks incredible. Like if you look at this lawn here, like this, I'm not sure how long you've been in the live stream, but if you look at Daryl's lawn, which is a picture of it there, that's what your lawn can look like when it's leveled and it is real mowed. With a rotary mower, it's not gonna look like that. But with a real mower, which is like really, I hate to say the correct, but is the best tool for um, cutting a warm season grass, assuming you have the time to do it, you're going to get an amazing result. So, you know, and no, we're just, we're, we're, on, we're on step one. I'm talking like step, you know, 17. But for, for next year, your big thing I'd say, recommendations I would say is um, over the winter, if you, even if you want to do that now, if you could find out if there's a lot of trash and junk that you can easily get out of the lawn, let's do that because that's going to, that's also going to have a negative effect on how well the grass grows. If you have like, uh, you know, tons of concrete that's a few inches beneath the surface, we're going to want to get rid of that uh, if at all possible. Um, because that's going again, it's going to negatively affect how well the the grass grows. You're going to have parts of your lawn that are just bare or struggling or thin, and you're not going to be able to figure out why. So that's something that you you can look into. If you've not done a soil test, it's worth doing as well, because uh, that's going to let you know starting out next year, next season, what types of products you should be applying as far as fertilizer that match what your soil needs. It's going to help you get the best result, not waste money. Um, it's like literally getting the answers to the test as far as uh, what to apply. And then after that, um, you know, top dressing once it gets to be May, June-ish, and then mowing. Just keep up with your mowing and you're going to get a... And then the byproduct will be an amazing looking lawn. And then uh, you're, you have a follow-up comment here. You're saying it isn't as bad as the front of your house, but leans one way and has some waves in it. Should I, over the winter, add some topsoil and try and fix the waves? I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it over the winter because the grass isn't gonna be growing um, over the winter. I would That would wait till spring. Uh, you know, you can wait till late April at the earliest. Um, well, Austin is cooler there than it is here, I think. But I mean, late April May, uh, to, into May is a, that around the time frame where you're gonna wanna start doing top dressing. Because really, you wanna do it when the grass is growing. Is growing. There's enough heat and sunlight and the grass is like, hey, it's go time, I'm growing aggressively. That way you won't like put dirt on your lawn and have it like look like a, a beach for months on end. So that's th that among other reasons is reasons why you wanna wait until, until the spring to early summer to get your top dress game on. But uh, you're on your way, man. It sounds like you are on your way. You know, take it, you already did the hardest part, which is deciding to take, to take charge. And as long as you keep up with your mowing, your grass is gonna, is gonna end up looking really good. All right, uh, next up here, we have Mr. Noob is chiming in. He says, hey, Ron, uh, Noob here. 
I real mow my St. Augustine and love how it looks. You real mow your St. Augustine? How low, how, how low do you real mow your St. Augustine? I'm sure, I wish Alan were on here. He'd be like, no, you're doing it wrong. Um, I love how it looks. Um, I need a good fertilizer. I've used flagship and stress blend, but most stays on top. What granular fur can go in better? I have the answer for that. I have an answer for that. So, uh, I, I mean, I guess you're saying Augustine is fairly dense, uh, given that you're real mowing it. I, I, I almost, I almost wondered. I almost, you're not, you're not trolling me, are you, Mr. Noob? Because I mean, most Saint Augustine you're mowing it like three inches or taller. Um, but whatever, I'll play along. You're saying that you're real mowing it. So you're real mowing it. So a, um, if if you've got your Saint Augustine really dense because you're doing a lot of real mowing then what you're going to want is a smaller prill, a finer prill to get through the canopy down to the soil. So a great option for that is a fertilizer from um, that we now can make available on the Golf Course Lawn Store from Lebanon Turf. It's called Humic Max. This is a really, really, really good product. Um, it's got 9% humic acid or 8.9% humic acid in it as well. So in addition to um, you know, giving your lawns, your soil, some nitrogen and some potassium. It's also got that 9% um, humic acid, which is going to help with um, the microbial activity. And in particular, you'll see here in the description, it's got an SGN of 150. What that means is the size, it's a size guide number, which is a way of measuring um, the size of the prills, the granules. And I've got some of it right here and I can show you. So if you look at the, the yard mastery for, nothing wrong with that, yard mastery makes a great fertilizer. But if you look at the prill size for this, you see how fine that is? So I can actually get some out and I can show you in my hand because this, this scale actually might look a bit better. Maybe, cover my face. You see how fine that is? It's like um, it's like the eye of a needle. It's very, very, very fine. Like I'm holding, holding a prill in my finger and that's how big, man, my skin is ashy. You need to put some lotion on. Um, that's how fine that is. So as far as getting down into like getting through the canopy and getting down into the soil, like this is going to be an awesome option. It's a very, it's again, it's a very fine pearl. It's, I, I, I specifically chose this um, this particular option because whenever um, Lebanon Turf said, "Yeah, we'll give you one to try out," I went through the catalog and I said, "Okay, I want something with a fine pearl, something with some um, humic acid," because they just they just started out with that product and um, and a good balance for it. So give this one a shot, Humic Max. You can get it at the Golf Course Salon store. That should fit the bill as far as um, I, I, apparently your your low cut or your very tight St. Augustine lawn. So give that a shot. Let me know how that uh, how that works. Out of curiosity, if you are still real mowing, what height are you real mowing your St. Augustine land? Just just out of curiosity. Okay, and we got a super chat here from Mr. Noob. Super chat received. I appreciate that, Mr. Noob. And then another one from Randy Cobb. Appreciate super both you guys. Super chat received. Thanks so much. I gotta know, I gotta know. Because if you can, send me pictures of it, man. I wanna see what your lawn looks like. Here's my email address. It's ron at golfcourselawn.com. Send me a picture of real mode St. Augustine. If for nothing else, so I can like send it to Alex and I, uh, to Alex to Alan and be like, hey, see, it can be done. It's not necessarily, you know, what you recommend, but this guy's doing it and look how it looks. So uh, if you don't mind, send me a picture of your lawn, if you don't mind, and uh, so I can I can take a look at that. It'd be cool to uh, be cool to check out. But yeah, Humic Max, get at the Golf Course Lawn Store. That will be your ticket for a finer prill quality fur that will get through the canopy, get down in the soil, and begin doing what fertilizer does. All right, uh, Two Trillo says, I'm not sure if you already mentioned, but how about them Braves? Can we get a sip of lemonade for them? Thank you, sir. Yeah, we can do that. We can drink to the Braves. Mm-hmm. I gotta tell you, I was the biggest skeptic. I kept telling all my buddies, they're gonna mess it up. They're gonna mess it up. Cause I think, what was it? They won in game six. In game five, I was watching and then like, you know, they started out with a grand slam and then they still had to come up and then they still lost that game to the Astros. I'm like, see, that's it. Typical Atlanta, here we go. We got a great lead, we shouldn't blow this lead. And they lost, you know, game five. And then game six, they were like, we are not messing around. We are not doing a Falcons on this. They, you know, they, they dropped the hammer and they got it done. So yeah, congrats to the Braves. Um, there's a big parade in Atlanta tomorrow. Actually, some of like, like some of uh, city, some of the city is like closing down for two hours for people to go and participate in the parade if they want. So it's, I mean, it's a great thing. Great, great for the city. Hopefully that carries over to Georgia. Them dogs can finally get a win. We'll see, we'll see. You know, it's probably asking a bit much, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good times, good times. We may as well take it when we can get it. All right, cool cat has a question. Says thoughts on burning grass. I I know a guy that did it. I've I've seen it done. Um, a buddy of mine, Lee, 
uh, did it to his lawn. And it's, um, I mean, it worked. It The lawn looked, I mean, the lawn looked horrible after, after he did it. And the lawn came out of dormancy. I mean, the lawn greened back up and looked really nice. Um, the problem with it, the biggest problem with it is that you really shouldn't do that. Uh, if you live in a subdivision, I'm pretty sure it's against most, it's against most HOAs to set your lawn on fire. That's thing one. You really can't, you shouldn't do it if you're even in an HOA or in most subdivisions. Um, and I don't know that there is a, uh, there's a ton of benefit in comparison to scalping the lawn and removing the clippings. Like that's another way of getting rid of like the buildup. Granted, they, they do say that, yeah, you burn the lawn, you are putting carbon cause you're basically creating like tiny bits of car charcoal. Um, you know, when you burn the lawn, but it's risky. You could, you know, you could set your lawn and your, and your neighbor's lawn on fire. So that's thing one. It's, um, I, it's in some places it's illegal. Like you can't do it in, in a lot of subdivisions. And I personally think that scalping, and as long as you're removing the clippings, works, you know, works well, produces a great result too. But if you want to burn your lawn and you can, none of those things I said apply to you and you want to do it, go for it. Just make sure you outline very heavily, like the area with, get your water hose out, water very heavily, like the the areas where you do not want there to be fire. Um, and then if you want to go for it, go for it and stand by with, with the hose. Um, I've seen it done, Lee did it on his lawn. It worked well. I just don't know that it's like this thing that it's uh it makes a huge tremendous difference that your lawn's gonna look that much better if you burn it versus not burning it. So my lawn has never been burned, and you can see how it how it looks. So that's my thoughts on uh, on burning grass. All right, uh, next up, Demir says, yeah, that's true, Ron. For perspective, I just received thirty gallons of Primo Max for next season on the course. Wow, wow. So put that in perspective for you guys. Um, like I like a. Like the the rate for the the low rate for um, Trinexapac ethyl on Bermuda is 0.25 ounces per thousand square feet. If you have Tifway, um, you can go up to 0.37. Uh, you can go a little bit higher, point in, point uh, almost almost 0.4, just under 0.4 um, per thousand square feet. So what that really means is for most Bermuda grasses, you're going to be putting mixing one ounce of humic of a, of, a, of a Trinexapac ethyl with four gallons of water, and it's gonna cover 4,000 square feet. So put, put in perspective, one ounce of T-Nex is like right there. It's like that first that first little notch there, that itty bitty bit is enough to do 4,000 square feet. So him getting 30 gallons of this stuff, yeah, it puts it in perspective as far as how much, um, how much of the stuff they use on golf course as well. It's a lot, very, very cool. And then Mr. Noob, um, so please do my last question. I think I got it. I think your question was about fertilizer. I think I got you covered. If not, just, you know, say, Ron, you didn't cover my question. Please revisit it. But I think, I think I got you. I think I got your question. All right. Next up, we got Michael A. Chafin saying, what's up, Ron? Not too much, man. I'm hanging in there. I'm sitting here again, eyeing your grass. It looks really, really good. The golf course you're taking care of looks good. Pretty awesome. And then Demir is chiming in. Thanks for that, Demir. He says, Mr. Noob looks for a greens grade product. Smaller prills are usually homogeneous, which means the prill has the entire analysis of the fur uh, to prevent getting speckled out on fine cut turf. That's a good point. That's also another good, that's another good point. This is not a, a homogeneous prill. Um, they do, um, Lebanon Turf does make that in their greens grade fertilizer. So if you think this stuff is fine, they make, um, in their country club, they make um, some fertilizer for greens. It's an SGN of like 80. And the stuff literally looks like powder. It's very, it's like, uh, it's, I mean, this is very fine. As far as fertilizer goes, this is very fine. And this will work in your St. Augustine. But um, like their their greens grade stuff um, is very, very fine. Again, it's almost, it looks almost like uh, like powder that you're putting on your on your lawn. I've, I've got a couple bags of it. Um, but you can, you can actually get it here locally. I've got a bag of it before I switched to Humic Max. I still have some left over from uh, two seasons ago, not last year, but the year before. I'll just show you guys that. But I've got, actually, if you want to see what it looks like, it's a good, it's a great, this is a great um, um, uh, segue for that. Not really segue, but I can show you what it actually looks like. So I've got it in a mason jar in this video so you can actually see. All right, so at um, Mr. Noob, if you want to see what, so this is very fine. And again, this will work. And you can actually get this online. The greens grade stuff is, is kind of hard to come by. Like you, like um, I actually, Lebanon, I, I did reach out when we were talking to Lebanon about um, the product to use or to make available. I asked about that and that was what, something they weren't willing to make available to DIY, mainly because it's really designed for greens. It's, it's not really necessary for most lawns. 
um, from Mr. Noob. Um, this video here, if you look in that video that is linked in the chat, you'll see my comparison between a product also from Lebanon Turf called ProScape. Um, it's more, I'd not say it's a consumer line, it's not really consumer, but it's not, it's not the country club. It's not the really, really fine pearl stuff. Comparing that to their greens grade, and you'll see the difference between them in in um, in pearl size. And as far as what Demir's talking about, as far as um, as far as um, it being homogeneous, this is not. You can see the different colors, whereas all their greens grade firts are. So it's um, just just take if you want to, if you're interested, take a look at it. But you you'll have to find those locally. Um, you're not going to be able to buy those online, unfortunately. Great, great stuff. All right, next up we have Gary Kellett Jr. chiming in. He says, hey, Ron, I just graduated from Big Box Stores and found a Site 1 by my house. I asked last week about Caravan G. I got hit hard with grubs last year. I was wondering, can I put Caravan... Um, let me see here. Yeah, the rest of it. Um, last year I got asked about Caravan G. Um, um, what else can I put, um, can I use throughout the summer and fall as a preventative. So, if you if you apply Caravan Caravan G in the spring, Gary, you should be good to go as far as grub control is as far as grubs for the season. Um, if you're looking for something that's even better than Caravan, as far as like just a straight insecticide, look into a Celeprin. If you got a site one nearby, they will be able to. They should have that too. A Celeprin G. It comes in a, in a um, in a granular. That is a that's a very very good um, insecticide. I mean, Caravan's fine too. The insecticide that's in Caravan is excellent as well. But as far as like a straight insecticide, um, a Celeprin is excellent, 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 excellent product. Um, not cheap, but it's very very good. And your lo that local site one should carry it. Um, if you want to compare pricing, you can look online here at Do My Own and see, I, I'll put a link here in the chat for you. You can see if they're, they're, this price is better. Um, but um, but yeah, um, that's an awesome option. But yeah, Caravan G in, um, so here's the thing, it's a good point. We can actually go into this a little bit. So Caravan G is an insecticide and a fungicide. Ideally, the time to, to apply fungicide as a preventative is really more May-ish, May-June timeframe. But insecticide, I'm a fan of getting that down in um, a little bit earlier in the season. So like like early, late March, early April, get it down before um, you know you have any issues and you're, you're good for coverage. So if you're going to be applying Caravan, you have to kind of decide which one do you really want. If you if you can afford to wait, if you if you've not had issues with grubs, but in your case you have. So in your case, we'd probably want to be applying it. Um, a bit earlier in the season, you're not going to get as much out of the fungicide because you're going to be applying the fungicide at a time when really you're a bit early for fungicide. You see what I'm saying? So Caravan G, while an excellent product, I look at that more as like, hey, I've not really had issues with grubs in my lawn before. I've not had issues with fungus is fungus issues in my lawn, but I want to put out a preventative that's going to that's going to take care of both grubs and um, and fungus issues. And I'm going to do that in like Mayish. Then Caravan G is an excellent option. In a case where you where you have dealt with grubs um, and you're looking for just a straight insecticide, a Celeprin is probably a better fit because you're not going to be wasting the fungicide that's in Caravan by applying it. Um, that early in the season. So either way, six, half a dozen, either will work, but I'm just, just giving you some other options uh, as well. Great, great question. Um, but yeah, that, that'll do the trick. Just an, an application of that in the spring you should do will, will, will work wonders as far as keeping grubs um, out of your lawn. All right, Lindrick Butler says, um, hey Ron, what pre-emergent are you recommending for the spring? I have 4,000 square feet of Bermuda grass in Georgia. I've applied Prodiamine last week at max rate, thanks. So in the spring then, just go with Dithiopyr. In my opinion, um, you know, Dithiopyr tends to be a bit more expensive than, than Prodiamine, but really out of the two, it's it's kind of a better fit as a spring pre-emergent um, uh, than Prodiamine because in places where you, where you deal with crabgrass, uh, Dithiopyr can reach back and can 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 kill baby crabgrass, whereas Prodiamine will not do that. Either one of them will work well, right? But in your situation where you've already went max rate um, in the fall, then you know for spring, let's switch it up. Let's go to something like Dithiopyr, which again is really a great fit for a spring pre-emergent um, as well. So that's what I would I would end up going with. That's what I recommend. That's 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 more than likely what I'm going to be doing um, in the spring um, as well. So. Good question. It's good. It's a good question. You're thinking. You're thinking ahead. You say you have four thousand square feet of Bermuda grass. So yeah, yeah. You can either do the liquid, or there are granular products you can find that has uh, Dithiopyr in it. Um, so yeah, you just shop around. And you can you can find something for that. I don't have anything in the golf course lawn store that has that. Um, 
Uh, it's like the granular we carry has prodiamine. So, so there you go. But yeah, you can, you can shop around. You can find something from Sunnyland that has diethiopyr in it. Good, good question. All right. Next year, Marcus S is in the house. He has a question. He says, I overseeded my Bermuda with annual rye last year. Okay. Somehow seeds survived this, this year's, uh, past season and heat. Um, what do you recommend that I spray to kill the small amount of seeds that have sprouted? Uh, Celsius is a great option. That will kill the ryegrass and not damage, or it's, it's the least likely to damage the Bermuda. Um, a slightly cheaper option is a product called Katana, but it's 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 not it's um it's not available in a lot of states. You can't get it in a lot of states as far as um as far as that one. So if you decide to go with Celsius, I will um I'll give you a link to that if you want. Um, again, that's, that is what I would go with a little bit. It's a little bit more pricey, but it's a great option for something that's going to kill the rye grass, but not damage your, um, or has a much, 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 much less chance of damaging your Bermuda, um, in the process. Just make sure you stick to the rate, the rate that's recommended on the label. Um, and you should be, uh, should be good to go there. It comes with a measuring container. Just follow that carefully, mix it properly. Um, use a surfactant with it, like a non-ionic surfactant, and you should, uh, should be good to go as far as killing off that rye. Great question, uh, Marcus. All right, uh, Dwayne Hopkins is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, missed last week, but catch the replay. I appreciate you, man. Viewership is down, so any views I can get, I really do appreciate, even if it's on the live stream and uh, it's after the fact. He says, glad to catch the stream live this week. Happy Friday. Yeah, man, glad you are here. Glad you are here. Glad you're here. And I think, uh, Gary, I've already answered that question about the grubs. Um, and then Dwayne Hopkins uh, has a question. This is a good one. I'm not sure about this one. He says, hey, Ron, does spurge die off during the transition to dormancy? I have some spurge on my lawn that looks red, but doesn't appear to be growing. Does the red color mean it's dying? So it, it doesn't do well when it's cold. Like I, I don't have spurge in my lawn when the, when the, when temps are cooler. Um, so much like crabgrass, it tends to do better in, when temperatures are, are warm, when it's hotter. Um, does it die off when it goes to dormancy? It's a great question. I, I can't say for sure that it does because um, in the spring, I will tell you that if you don't put pre-emergent down on your lawn and you had issues with spurge, it will come back in those places where you had spurge before. So whereas the, the grass may, whereas the, the actual weed itself may die off, the, the, the seeds that it throws off will survive through winter and, uh, and come back in the, in the spring if you don't use pre-emergent. Um, so yeah, just keep monitoring it. I, I'm inclined to say yes, because I don't have any spurge on my lawn. Alice doesn't have it. Most of the lawns around here, the only thing that you really see on the lawns in this area during the winter time is POA. You see a, a lot of that on lawns where they didn't put down any kind of pre-emergent. So a uh, great question. That's a good one. Keep monitoring it. Um, yeah. Kevin D says, yeah, it is Thai pack load. I have some for sale. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, and next here, and next up we got here, we have um, Covington uh, Turf Management. Um, thanks for coming to hang out. He says, hi, Ron. I have green still, and it is 15. Um, it is 15. I'm not sure what 15 is. Oh, 15 degrees? Um, where are you that you have 15 degrees? Anyway, that's cool, man. I appreciate you coming to chime in, chime in, in, the, in the live stream. Um, that's pretty awesome. We need some more details on that, Covington. I, I'm assuming you mean 15 degrees is what you, when you say yeah, it is 15. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty incredible if your grass is, um, is tolerating those types of temperatures or it's, uh, it must mean something else. I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably wrong on that one. All right. Cedric is, um, up next. He says, Hey, big Ron's weapon of mass destruction in karate. You're pretty quick for someone that's about six, five, uh, back to the lawn. Big Ron, will you be experimenting with any new products next season? Um, first of all, I'm six, four. I am not a weapon of mass destruction in karate. I'm decent. I'm fairly decent at karate, but I wouldn't say mass. I mean, the guys that are weapons of mass destruction in karate and martial arts are, they fight in the UFC. They do it for a living, right? I don't, I don't do it for a living. Mm -mm. Um, but I appreciate the kind words. Uh, you say, what will I be experimenting with next season? I've got some stuff in the, um, in the, in the pipeline. I've got some stuff in the pipeline. I can't tell you just yet because I don't have it nailed down as far as when I'm be getting it as yet. And some of it I'm not allowed to actually talk about as yet, but there there are going to be some some new products uh, that will that will hopefully make. I mean, I'm going to be getting them um, here shortly, and by next season, by the time you guys are going to be able to use it, uh, hopefully I'll be able to talk about it by then, and you guys will be able to see. But yeah, there will be some some new stuff coming out next year um, if all goes to plan. So stay tuned, stay tuned. But again, it's just, it's just new it's new additions. 
literally everything that I did this year still applies. Like if you took like the stuff that I recommended, which is um, one, just mow your grass, like, like mow your grass a lot. That's thing one, most important thing, as well as get a soil test, fertilize according to that soil test, and then mow your grass, you're gonna have a great looking lawn. Yeah, that's 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 the nut that's it in a nutshell. I mean, uh, um, put some water on it, you know, keep water on it, keep it hydrated. But I mean, really, the biggest reason why most people do not have great lawns, it comes down to mowing. Come down, come down to mowing them more than anything else. Uh, that's usually the biggest culprit. But you will see, Cedric. There'll be um, you know, whatever whatever um, next season rolls around, uh, you guys on the live stream will be first to know. All right. Uh, T, uh, T Nug says, if you doubt real mowing St. Augustine, then look on Instagram. There's a guy on there who mows under half an inch. There's a guy on Instagram that mows St. Augustine under half an inch. That I'd like to see. I'd like to see how it looks. I mean, again, I, I've i always known as St. Aug to be taller. It wants to be taller. It needs to be like, you know, three and a half, four inches or higher to be to do well. Um, but I, I'd love to see some shortcut St. Augustine. I mean, Saint, shortcut St. Augustine that's still green and looks good. That'd be cool to check out. It'd be cool to check out. It would be uh, it would be interesting. I'll have to look out for it. Um, all right. Uh, next up, we have John Holmes. It says, for anyone with piles of leaves, the B and D BV sixty six hundred blower leaf sucker works great. Wonders at mulching. I suck up the leaves, um, and it bl it blows and mulches the leaves all over the yard. Free fert and organic matter. Sounds like a serious piece of equipment, John. Um, but yeah. If you have um, leaves all over your lawn, which I do not have because I don't have any trees, uh, then that's an option. It sounds like a, is that something that a homeowner would own or is that something that you would like you'd actually drive? I'm not, I'm not sure how big, uh, how big a piece of equipment we're talking about here. Um, we're talking about, John, let's see, the B&D, what's it called? B&D, the BV6600. It's probably something you got to, you got to, let's see, 6600. It is, oh no, it's not. It's like, a, um, looks like it's a, it's a, oh, it's a Black & Decker. Okay, so it's, it's a handheld unit. So Black & Decker handheld unit. Cool. Yeah. So it is something a homeowner could use. Appreciate that, John. All right. Next up, uh, Dwayne is coming to the rescue. He says, Get everyone, let's help Ron out and the channel by hitting that like button ever so lightly. I appreciate that, Dwayne. I really could use the likes. You know, it's, it's slim pickings this time of year. Not a lot of content. Need all the help I can get as far as engagement on the channel. So if you guys wouldn't mind hitting that like button ever so gently while I take a sip of my lemonade, I would really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. It's a good question, but Dwayne has a follow-up. It says, Ron, when do you recommend using and doing a soil test? I did one about two months ago. I was curious if I should wait till spring to my first one of the year. Your recommendation. If you do one two months ago, yeah, wait till the spring. That's fine. Um, I am a fan of doing them twice. I mean, I do them quarterly, but I, I don't recommend that for most people. Like, really, um, if you do them twice per year, once in the spring and once in the fall... My, here's my reasoning, my thinking behind that, okay? If you start out and you do a soil test in the spring, you're going to see what, like how, well, like what, the, the state of the, your, of the current state of your soil. And it's going to let you know, hey, for my starter fur of the season, as well as what I'm going to use to feed the lawn throughout the season, what should I be applying to my lawn? So that's why I like, I am a fan of doing a soil test in the spring before you start, you know, throwing fertilizer at it. I'm also a fan of doing a, um, a soil test in the fall for two reasons. One, um, it allows you to see, hey, all my applications that I did over the spring growing season, um, in the summer growing season, how did that change the soil? It also gives you the opportunity to measure, most importantly in the fall, what I'm looking for is like pH. Because um, around here, what tends to happen is your pH, are, we tend to have acidic soil in my area. So we tend to do lime apps. So I, a soil test in the fall lets me know, one, how did all my applications over the spring and summer do? Like, did it change the soil any? And also lets me know, um, whether I should be applying a calcitic or a dolomitic lime to my lawn um, in the fall months. So that's why I'm a fan of doing them twice a year. Really, once a year is plenty. If you, if you, if you only do once one a year, that's that works too. But for your first season, if it were me, I, let's say the like next year's going to be the first time you did a soil test. Not in your case, but for anyone else watching. Say next year you decide, hey, I'm going to do soil testing. I would do one in the spring fertilize accordingly or do your amendments according to that and do another one in the fall. And then for the winter or for the season of 2023, if you just want to do one soil test a year, you could do that if you want. Um, but I, I'm a fan of, you know, twice a year so you can see how what you're doing is affecting the soil, how it's changing. And it allows me to look at stuff like I just showed you guys, which I can't pull up. Yeah, it, shows, it allows me to see this kind of stuff. Granted, this data is, is from three months ago. 
But had I not done like a follow-up soil test, I wouldn't know if my dolomitic lime application made a difference in the soil pH, which it did. So you can see this is the soil in late May, early June, and this is the soil in October after 40 pound, uh, a 40 pound per thousand uh, application of dolomitic lime to my lawn. So you can see literally it made, it had um, had a response. So um, all, all good stuff. So that's why I'm a fan of soil testing. It's literally the answers to the test as far as how to take care of your, your soil. So good, good stuff. And then Marcus says, thanks, I'll go with Celsius. That's a great option. Um, yep, it's a great option. And then um, we set Chris uh, Rocker here. He says, hey, Ron, I live in the Pacific Northwest and the pines from the pine tree far end on my neighbor's property are destroying my grass. How do I deal with the pines? Any sug any suggestions? Um, when you say they're destroying your your grass, are you say is that because you're saying the shade from it or the the pine cones? I mean, I think your your best bet is going to be to get them up. Don't let them sit on the lawn. I'm trying to type and um, and talk at the same time. Uh, don't let them sit on the uh, on the lawn. Um, that would be um, my thoughts. So I'm not sure what problem you're dealing with specifically. Uh, Chris, um, if if it's the shade, I mean, we, we I mean, ask your neighbors really really nicely to cut the trees back so you can get more shade on the on the grass. Um, if it's not shade and it's the pine cones, like removing them is going to be your uh, your best bet. And actually, Mr. Noob came through. I'm going to see if I can make this happen. I checked my email really quick and he sent it. So if you guys want to see, uh, bear with me here. Let's see if I can make this happen. Let's see. I think so. Yes, yeah, so if you guys want to see what really shortcut St. Augustine looks like, I wouldn't have believed if I didn't see it. I would not have believed if I didn't see it. So, okay, it's, uh, the, the sizing is not very good, but that is St. Augustine with a California trimmer, he said, cut really short. So it can be done. It can be done. There you go, guys. Uh, so there you go. If, you, if, you, if someone says you can't cut St. Aug super short, this man's doing it. He's doing it. It looks actually, it looks it looks decent. It looks decent. It looks good, man. So there you go. You learn something new every day. Um, according to most people, that would be not optimal. But I mean, looking at your lawn, it looks healthy. It looks like it's 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 uh it's liking it, Mr. Noob. So uh could keep keep doing what you're doing, man. It seems to be working. Uh yeah, so hopefully that helps, Chris, as far as the pine cones. Um anything you can do to remove them, like one, removing the shade, reducing the shade, and also getting rid of the pine cones is um, like not allowing them to sit on the lawn is also is also going to help things as well. But big thing is the, the trees are, 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 are your problem. And unfortunately, if they're on your neighbor's property, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do about them unless, unless you, you like ask really, really super nicely if they will like cut, like cut back some of the, the tree that overhangs your property. I mean, all they can say is no, and then you're not any worse off than you are now. Right. So worth a shot. All right. Uh, next up, we have Jim Carson in the house. He says, I overseeded my fescue lawn three weeks ago. A little bit late, but okay. He says, uh, so I believe it is time for the first mow. Is that correct? Also, um, do you fertilize a new seed? I live in SoCal. Um, yeah, so if it's if it's growing, it depends on how it's growing, Jim. So if you overseed um, your lawn and it's growing nicely, like it's filling in nicely, um, and you want to get out there and mow, then yeah, go ahead and do that. I mean, you know, make your first cut, keep it on, on the higher side. Don't, don't, um, you know, don't try and like do a major uh, height of cut change on your first mow because it still is new grass. Um, and as far as fertilizer, yeah, I mean, I would feed the lawn according to whatever program you're on. You know, if you're, if you're doing what I do, um, you're going to be feeding the lawn monthly with a granular and you're going to be spoon feeding with a liquid every two weeks. Um, so it just depends on whatever fertilizer program you're on. Like just, just do that. I wouldn't do it. In other words, I wouldn't do anything special just because you put seed down. You know, if you, you know, if you, if it's time for you to put fertilizer down based on, um, how your grass is growing and how much gro of the growing season you got left, then apply for it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do anything special just because of that. But uh, great question. Good stuff. All right, Trevor, Trevor, what's going on, man? It's been, it has been a minute. Say, hey Ron, how have you been? I've been, I've been doing well. Hanging in there, going through withdrawals, mowing withdrawals, but yeah, I've been doing doing real well, man. It's been a while, so glad to see you are back and uh, and hanging out. And thanks for that, Mr. Noob. Thanks for the pictures. Um, as you saw, your lawn made an appearance on the live stream, so people can see what shortcut St. Augustine looks like. Pretty cool, if you ask me. So it can be done. 
it can be done. That looks that actually looks really good, man. Uh, but yeah, very cool. Thanks for sharing your pictures, man. I really, I really do uh, appreciate it. See, there, that, that's when you know you have a man that is after is hardcore about his line. He's like, I don't have to go out and take a picture. I already got pictures done. I'm just on my phone, email, pictures. I've got that covered. So you know you're dealing with a lawn with a lawn nut uh, that is uh, when he's able to produce pictures that quickly. All right, uh, next up. KS is op is up here. He says, I killed my weeds, fertilized for the first time, and cut more often. It looks a lot better. That's a big thing. You know, it, if if you mow, I can't, it's it, it's it, I can't really stress how important um mowing is to keeping your grass looking really good. It's it's like it becomes on some level natural weed control because when your lawn is dense, really as you mow more, it gets denser, it gets tighter. It makes it harder. It, it, it becomes more competition for the weeds. So in addition to putting down a pre-emergent, um, regular mowing and fertilizing accordingly, that's really all you should need to, to keep weeds out of your lawn. But I'm, I'm not surprised. You know, you, you, as long as you did all the right things, you you kill the weeds. So you did a, a herbicide to get ahead of the problem. You fertilize, and then you started picking up your mowing frequency, and you get a great looking lawn. So I am not I am not surprised by that. And then um, Jim Carson, um, Demir's chiming in. He says, you are good to mow. He says, get a balanced fertilizer, meaning all three numbers are somewhat equal. Uh, N for growth, uh, P to help, uh, the phosphorus to help promote strong roots, and some K, some potassium to give it a health boost. If you are in the market for a balanced fert, as Demir is talking about, um, there is the triple 12, the Yardmaster triple 12 that we carry in the golf course lawn store. Um, right here, this is a great option. It's a, it's a fully balanced fert like um, Demir's talking about. And this also has some iron as well as um, a full micronutrient complement. So I can't make it blow up where you guys can actually see it here, but it has all of them. It has boron, copper, zinc, manganese, um, and of course iron as your micronutrient. So this is a good option, not, not, cra not crazy expensive, and it's a good balanced fert if that's what you want to roll with on your new grass. Good stuff. Thanks for that, Demir. I appreciate it. And then um, we got a super chat here from Mr. Noob. I'm not sure if I did it, but we'll do it again anyway, just super in case. Chat I appreciate it. You said you sent me pictures, and we have seen the pictures. So thank you so much for that, uh, Mr. Uh, Noob. Thanks for that. Uh, Green M is in uh, the house and has a comment. Says, hey, Ron, how's it going? And everyone, I guess we're doing a little research on the web. Um, the web-looking stuff on my, on my dirt is caused when malorganite is introduced to the lawn because the lawn is looking great. Thoughts? Uh, I've never heard of malorganite um, causing the little webs on your lawn. When I think of little webs on your on lawn, I think of like dollar spot, especially if it's in the morning when it's just dew on the lawn. But if it, here's the thing, if the lawn looks great, keep doing what you're doing. There's no reason to get you know worried about it. If it's looking good, there's no brown spots, nothing, nothing looking weird with it. Keep using the Milo and just keep, if it's working, keep doing it. So, uh, so yeah, I, but I've not heard of malorganite causing little webs on the lawn. I, I've, I've used malorganite for a number of years and years past, and because um, it used to be all I used, and I did not, I didn't experience that. So I'm not sure um, what they're referring to. Could be, but I've never, I've never personally experienced that. I have not. All right, Chris is saying, "Thanks, Ron. The grass uh, growth is stunted due to the, both the pine cones and pine shades." Uh, the pine cones are easy to remove, but the pine shades are not. Yeah, the shade, I mean, if you can just ask them, I mean, ask them really nicely. Say, hey, listen, I'm really trying to get my grass to grow nice. Is there any way, any way that we can cut this back? I'll even pay for it. I'll come do it if you want so I can get some more sunlight on my grass. It'll grow. See what they say. I mean, all I can say is no, like I said, and then you're not any worse off. Not any worse off. All right. Um, Green M has a question and he's posing this to everyone else. Has anyone else heard of that from applying malorganite? Seeing webs in the dirt, okay, in the dirt and not the grass. Um, um, it's still 70 throughout the day and mid 50s going into the night and morning fescue and Kentucky bluegrass mix. Webs in the dirt. I'm not sure what that, you, you, I mean, Green M, if you don't mind, probably won't have time to do it. Um, I won't be able to put it on the channel, but can you send me a picture of it just, just so I can see what you're talking about? Like, um, right here, Ron at golfcourselawn.com. Um, I, I've not, I mean, I'm not seeing, or I can't, I'm trying to picture what you're talking about because I've put down a lot of malorganite, like really heavy. And I've seen it, I've seen where it will like sometimes clump and it'll make like a, um, 
how can you I describe it? Like a like a like a like a like a dry pancake sort of like a like a where it all kind of gets together. But I've not seen webs, so I'd be interested in seeing a picture of that. If you don't mind sending me an email, that's my email there. Run at golfcourselon dot com. All right, um, Robert Mohorez, uh, thanks for the super chat, sir. I really do appreciate that. Super chat received. Thanks for the for the generosity. I really do appreciate it. And then um, Robert Mohorez says. Hey, Ron, coastal use is 48 to max um, of 64 ounces per acre. Um, POA and um, other broadleaf, um, not bad yet. What rate would you use? Um, I covered the rate. If memory serves me, it's it's um, one point, it comes up to right at 1.5 ounces or just under 1.5 ounces per thousand uh, square feet is what that comes out to. So you take, um, you know, if you take 64 ounces, uh, and you divide that by 43-ish, right? Which is about how many square feet there are, 43,000. How many square feet there are in an acre, thereabouts. Um, you come up with 1.48, which is about like, like 1.5. So um, so around 1.4 to 1.5 ounces per thousand square feet um, is what um, uh, you can use for coastal. 1.5 ounces per thousand square feet is what I use to apply it. And if you want to see how I mixed it, how I applied it, all that fun jazz, I've got a video right here that will show you exactly how I did it, Robert. It's it's an, actually, it's really easy product to um to put down, but this one right here will show you, um, show you that. So here we go at Robert Morris. And um, that video is all about coastal and prodiamine. And it actually has the rates and how, how I mixed it. All right, great stuff. Um, and then at John Holmes, is the acidity of the soil pine straw, or is, is the acidity of the pine of the pine straw possibly? Yeah, it's a good thing. Check, do a soil test in that area and see what it um, what it looks with the soil in that area is looking like as well, um, uh, Chris. But it, again, you said that you had a shade problem, so that's what I'm kind of inclined to think that mostly your your issue is. But it could be that too. It very well could be that too. All right, uh, uh, Andrew has a question here. He says. Uh, Ron, I have a T-shaped soil probe, and I'm not sure I'm doing it correctly. Once I pull the probe out of the ground, I, I typically remove the top grass, but want to know how many inches of soil do I use? So, good question. So what I do is, is this guy here. So this is the soil, the soil probe um, from my soil. If you can see, I don't know how long that is. That's probably eight inches. So what I do is I, when I insert this, I press it down as far as it can go. I give it a twist and then pull the core out. Um, and then I, I, I put the entire sample in the bucket, the entire thing. And then I do that for, you know, eight to 12 spots all around the entire lawn, mix it all up in the bucket. Um, and then I'll, I'll, um, get a good scoop of that, you know, that homogeneous blend, that blend that represents the entire lawn. I'll make sure I remove any like grass and that kind of stuff out of there. And then put that in the container, the, um, the, the deionized water in the ion exchange resin container, uh, and send that out. So... Uh, you're asking how many inches? I mean, just I mean, you send this down as, as deep as you can go, and then pull it out, and then just mix it all, mix it all together, so that you're getting a sample that represents, you know, the entire lawn. So as long as you're getting down, like three, four inches or lower, like deep, a little bit deeper is better. Like four inches, that's probably a good sweet spot, or lower than that, you should be good to go. So yeah, hopefully that that helps. But, but this literally, when I put it in my lawn, I literally press it down as far as it will go till it stops. I give it a twist and then pull and then. I mean, if you you could look at this, you can see. I mean, I have fairly big hands. You can see how much of my hand that, like, where the, where the core stops, like right here, right there, and um, this entire thing will be filled with soil a lot of times. So hopefully that gives you an idea. We got Autumn Henry in the house. What's going on, Ot? What's going on? Thanks for coming to hang super out in received. the super chat. I mean, I know you're not you need to be a super chat, but you know, whatever. It's my my baby girl, so she's coming to hang out and chat about lawn care and. I guess I guess you are really really bored to come hang out in the live stream and and uh, support old dad. I appreciate you as always. Uh, love you, love you lots. All right. Um. So next up we have uh, Robert. He says everyone liked. If not, now would be a great time and take a sip. I, I I do look a little dry, don't I? I am a little bit parched. I need to take a sip of my lemonade. Well, everyone touches that like button ever so gently, not hard. Don't don't slam it. Just reach up there, move the mouse up, and just tap. Just a nice little tap ever so gently, and I'll take some of my lemonade while we get more people to come in and hang out in the live stream. All right, Demir is giving his thoughts 
on the sample. He says, Andrew Phillips, when I pull plugs for soil testing, I go down three to four inches and that, and I always remove any thatch and plant material from the soil plug. Hope that helps. So there you go. So three to four inches, get rid of the debris and you are good to go. That's awesome, man. Thanks for that, Demir. I really do appreciate you. We are winding down, guys. We are winding down. I think we are down to our last comment. Down to our last comment of the evening from Thurston R. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for answering all my emails this season. You're very, very welcome, sir. Thanks for sending me emails. Um, and helping me get my lawn green and healthy after armyworms and fungus issues here in upstate New York. Much appreciated. You're very, very welcome, sir. I appreciate all the support over the season as well. So I am... I'm glad it was helpful. And then we got Demir uh, giving everyone a tip. He says, if anyone is wondering why you'd want to remove any thatch or grass material from a soil plug, our lab says it's because nutrients can be bound up in that thatch layer and it will skew results. It's a great point, Demir. So if you're only if you're really trying to test the soil, um, it's just the soil materials that you want is what you want to send in. So that's good. Great, great stuff. Great talking point. Maybe they can be one of the talking points if we can get you to come on next week. If everything can work out, it'll be, uh, be pretty awesome. So yeah, guys, so so all we've come to the end of the show. Remember, next week on the live stream, we're doing a giveaway. We're doing a couple of hats. So whenever this ends, whenever I say, you know, have a great weekend, get out and mow or go out and mope because you can't mow your lawn. Next week, we're going to be doing two hats. We have the Desert Tan Miramichi Green, personal favorite. And we have the Gray um, Miramichi Green. We'll say Gray with an E for those of us that want the more sophisticated spelling of Gray. And then we have two options. We have the navy, which the navy didn't get a lot of love, but some people like the navy. And then we have the, the gray one. We might end up doing both, maybe. So we might do, we're doing at least three hats, maybe four hats um, next week. Um, the way you are entered is all you have to do is once this live stream is over, leave a comment on this. Once I'm done, it'll the comment section will open up. Just leave a comment. I think the comment we settled on was like iron sharpens iron, but if you put anything else down there, as long as it's not crazy or offensive or you know, you know, something not, nothing, nothing crazy like saying that, you know, rye grass is better than Bermuda, you know, something something sensible, uh, then you're entered. That's all you have to do. You don't have to even be a subscriber. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, but if you're not, all you have to do is comment on the on the, the live stream because that's how the software um, the comment, the, the 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 software that we use to pick the winner works. It, it, it's based on comments. If you comment, you're entered. Very, very, very awesome, guys. Thank you so much for coming to hang out. Um, hopefully, next week we will have a special guest on the live stream where we can make everything else um, well, work out. Get out, do something fun in your lawn. Uh, you know, for those of you up north that um, are still have your cool season grass and it's still growing, we envy you. You know, you know, channel good vibes for us and and uh, you know, keep your lawn looking as nice as possible for as long as possible. And uh, and yeah, and I will work on that piece of content um, for a lawn equipment update, so you guys can see what lawn equipment I've been using on the lawn, and hopefully you guys will get a kick out of that. Thanks so much for watching, guys.